come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Coming at you every Saturday, like we always do, except this week was we're throwing your curveball. These are the Internet Radio Superstars. I'm Kirby. Fuck the movies. The movies don't matter. Read. Uh, I'm Sean. <laughs> and That's I'm, all I got. I'm Colin. Yeah, Sean, sorry. I didn't screen 2 is the best, Tyler. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, yeah, curveball. It's not for me this time. So the I'm universe here. blessed us with this gift. Yeah, Holly oh, is Holly's uh, gonna take that real well. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know what I mean, Holly. You know. What I mean. <laughs> well, she is uh, sidelined tonight, and she had chosen tonight's movie, which was going to be Cellar Dweller. Mm. So we're going to put that off for some time in the near future. And tonight we watched the movie that the universe chose. Indeed, because we had all seen it. So we're like, okay, fine, we'll do this instead. So we mm-hmm. watched Scream Six. Directed by Radio Matt, Silence. Radio Silence, which is, well, it's actually a third guy, so we can't just say Radio Silence. Oh, is it? Matt Bettinelli, Open, Tyler Gillett, or Gillett, I think it is. Those are the directors. Chad Valella is the third part of Radio Silence. He's the producer. Okay. Just what you want in every production setup is more people than necessary, you know? Well, we yeah. talked about them before. Speaking of more people than necessary. <laughs> yeah. So Radio Silence, if I'm right, like kind of came onto the horror scene because they did a segment of VHS. Yes. The first one? Yeah. It was the Haunted House deal so. at the end. It was like one of the stronger mm-hmm. segments of uh, VHS. Mm-hmm. And then they graduated feature films. If I'm correct, that the progression was they did a movie called Ready or Not, which correct. I think we all saw and yes. all liked yeah. quite a bit. Yeah, it's it was a good really movie. good. I really I enjoyed like- it. I like Samara Weaving a lot, and that may- movie made me sad that she's not Harley Quinn because, I mean, I know she's like a clone of Margot Robbie, but like, like, I like her, and I like that she's a scream queen, so I would have liked to see her, you know. Yeah, because she was also in The Babysitter, and this was a movie that was made for Netflix by Mick G, I remember. And there's a sequel, uh, Babysitter, Killer Queen. Queen. She's also in Guns Akimbo. Yeah. Right. Right. Watched on this show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like that she does weird genre stuff, even still. like That's the best thing about her. First place I saw her was in uh, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. She has a small part with... with, um, uh, Hawkins or uh, Jonathan Hawks. I forgot uh, about her in that. She's great. She, it's yeah. a small part, but she's mm-hmm. <laughs> her character. She does great character work mm-hmm. in in whatever okay. she does. <laughs> um, in this movie, they let her use her Australian accent, which I forgot yeah. she's Australian, and it well, threw me off. I was like, whoa! And Margot Robbie is too. That's what's weird right. is that they look I mean, the they same are, and they're they both are that Australian. meme where there yeah. are six blondes with yeah. big eyes, and you're just like, and, and we're supposed to believe these are all different actresses. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> But I give Samara Weaving uh, more credit. And Samara so. Weaving is in Scream 6. She I guess is. that's why we're talking about her. She um, is. Okay, so Scream. Scream. Well, okay. So for the record, mm-hmm. I guess for the rest of this episode, is it okay if we call the last entry? Scream 5. Scream 5. That's or what five, I'm going to call or it. Or 5 Cream. Or whatever 5 you Cream. Prefer, or, five yeah. cream. Yeah. or now yeah. that they've switched from numerals to Roman numerals, they yes. could have done that a movie earlier. They could have the made v. the V in yeah. the M and yep. they didn't. But yes. I, well, I, think, well, I think they knew that. They understood why they... Probably better, as much as annoying as it could be, better doing it the other way to get people back into it. You know what I mean? I don't after know. It's so super long. annoying to me. I have a movie called oh, no. Scream and then a movie called Scream 6 agree, right after it. It's so I th- annoying. Well, I think you get less interest if, if after 11 years, Scream 5 comes out rather than just, you know, Scream and the They did with Scream 4. And like, Scream 4 made a shit ton of money. Yeah, I like the ones that uh, no, commit it to it. Didn't. I Scream mean, 4 it was made their money. lowest opening. <laughs> it barely made what this movie made this opening weekend. Is that what they're saying? Because of numerals, people get tired when you see... So like, the four is to blame for that, is what you're but saying. Six. I'm saying it... I but will, I'm, I'm saying that that will, it in some numbers. data yeah. for marketing, that will move the needle. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. guarantee it. Yeah. And, and as of the time we're recording this, we're recording this on Sunday night after it opened... Yes. Scream 7 has already been greenlit and we'll start filming later this year. This, I've seen a few of those and I haven't seen any official yeah. from anybody It'll yet. come tomorrow. I mean, on a Monday. It'll be the official release after opening weekend. They'll right. Say, they'll and say Nev Campbell greenlit. will never return. No, uh, not no. unless they've, a couple of Brinks trips. They've shown that they house. can open okay. a movie without so, her. But that's, I guess, but the question. So sh- this, Nev Campbell is the star of the Scream series mm-hmm. yes. and she is not in the sixth episode. Yes. 
Um, and barely mentioned, barely acknowledged. Even uh, like, well, even when she is, it's mentioned. It's so throwaway it's dialogue. So yeah. garbage dialogue. Mm-hmm. It's not even throw. It's throwaway. Yes, it's yeah. also just garbage. It's just to acknowledge there is a character named Sydney in the franchise. Yeah, yep. and even Ghostface mentions her on the phone every now and again. I yeah. think they're just pepper here and there, just so you don't forget. Mm-hmm. I know we've come a long way since that original scream. I mean, Man, I guess horror slasher series they do right. Eventually, you have to do something crazy, and this one. Does what Friday the 13th did a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, took the action to Manhattan. Yep. Uh, it did. So it's Ghostface takes but Manhattan. But not really. Leprechaun also did that. Yeah, I remember. They, they did. No, this is Ghostface takes Montreal or wherever that was. Well, Jason took Vancouver. Yeah, yeah, but he was actually there at one point. Oh, okay. So like, you're there's none a pic- of this was uh, shot in New York. Well, because it never. Just, just this flyover shot in the shots. beginning. Yeah, because yeah, I don't even recall them doing anything in Times Square. That was the thing Friday nope. the 13th yeah, actually why not? took him to why Times not? Square for one night. Yeah. If you're going to do what they do in this movie, why not you have just to, fucking have him in Times Square? you got to pick a, at least one landmark, right? It's, it's, it's got to be Times Square. It's got to be Statue of Liberty, S- you know, Empire State Building. He's got to be something somewhere. To say that you're there, Central yeah. Park. Especially considering this is quote unquote a Halloween movie. Yeah. That's the easiest time you get to do this. Yeah. Oh, it takes place during Halloween. Yes. Yeah, around yeah. around Halloween, and so everyone there's a lot of costumes in this. Which I personally, um, I, this didn't feel right to me having a scream movie take place at Halloween. It felt the Halloween didn't feel. It didn't feel right. The Halloween of it all didn't feel like how the Halloween of it no. all. No. Oh, well, I get it. It gives you a chance to put a oh, guy no. in a mask. I understand the in, mechanism yeah. of it, yeah. but the feeling of it is doesn't. Right, scream is go. not a movie that like takes place around Halloween typically. You know, well, like, scream is typically. I guess it's the thing. Like, and maybe we'll. Like the idea of the Scream movie, right, is that it is a self aware acknowledgement of all the horror movies that, you know, came before it. I mean, the 90s Scream was an acknowledgement of the 70s and 80s slasher cycle, right? Yes. And it was kind of like the next, uh, you know, because it was like we're aware that all the characters in it are behaving like characters in a horror movie. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and so each scream then has to deal with like some facet of like a horror movie sequel. So the second one's about like this is the sequel, you know, mm-hmm. the the prequel, the requel, the um, you know, the four change legacy sequels. Into, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um so like what was this one um you know, talking about That's a major problem with this movie that's, is yeah, that's, it's uh, like so we've lost the whole connection we've to lost actually the thread movies, entirely. you know. Yes. Oh what? yeah, fuck the movies, the movies don't matter is a direct quote from yeah. this movie. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, it's it's also the f- one of the first things that Ghostface does at the beginning is it's like who gives a fuck about movies? Mm-hmm. Like they say it right off the Which bat. Which only makes sense because of the reveal. Only later makes on. sense because of the reveal. Yeah. Which I guess we should say up front, we're going to spoil the shit out of this. Like yes, if, we are. if you have not watched it, turn it off now because it, it, spoilers might come out any second. Yeah, you know? any so, second. Usually well, happens. it's probably going to happen like right now because yeah. we're okay. So the the beat. Okay, so every scream movie mm-hmm. has a uh, like an open that usually features a famous actor because of the the first one with Drew Barrymore. It's like you got Drew Barrymore, you think she's going to survive, and then she dies. And yep. every sub- subsequent movie has brought in like a special guest star. Yeah, whether it be someone who is a star in real life who they got for this small part or it is a previous character Mm -hmm. from earlier in the series Mm because that's when we get cotton in part three Mm -hmm. um and i think that's part nope that's it yeah because anna paquin shows uh, and kristen bell showed up part four and and, and lucy hale and someone else too because there was a double fake out on that one. there was i don't remember who the other one was lucy hale and someone else yeah yep and uh, so this one has Samara Weaving. Yeah. It has Samara Weaving. Who, um, I mean, again, I'm like, okay, I like that she's in it, and but it is like a nod to like the hardcore horror fandom, right? Who would know who she is. Yeah. Who oh, saw it has to be, right? The babysitter, yeah. you know? Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. I don't, maybe not even hardcore. I think people would see it and be like, oh, I know her. Yeah. Okay. I think so. All right. Well, it's the audience for this movie, I think. Right. Sure. Well, sure. definitely. Right. Anybody's going to right. see it, I think so. Okay. So she, in this open, is a... College dumbest professor. person to ever live. No, no, no. Well, I'll say the dumbest uh, uh, horror movie professor. Uh, film. Dumbest woman? No woman would act this way. I'm I don't, sorry. I gotta believe. I mean, I'm glad you're saying it because I'm just like, no, it's just like. I, this is this is immediately nobody, the hairs went up on the back of my neck with this movie because I'm like, a woman 
meeting someone for a blind date goes down an alleyway when he's and, telling her to a person she's never yeah. met before. No uh, woman would ever do this. This, this is mean, against everything for personal safety. Like, and I know we are the sixth screen movie in, but there should still be some level of believability yeah. in these things, I think. But just we'll even, talk about that. Even take her being a slasher teacher out of it. Yeah. She should just, as a your person, safety instincts as a person I'm should not tell going you, down don't alley. go down this dark alley when a stranger is telling me to. Yeah. Like, and... But yeah, add on top of that, she's supposed to be an expert in slasher movies. How stupid is this woman? Yeah. Like, it's hard well, to sympathize with her because she's so dumb. And even that cracked me up that it's like, she's a college professor. What do you teach? Slasher movies. And I'm like, oh, wow, we've come a long way to where yeah. uh, you know, like, your so education now, yeah. is we're going to tell you about slasher junk horror movies from the 80s. I love yeah, them. Don't get me yeah. wrong. Are they worthy of study? Sure, but like as a career that specific, path, yeah. how's this going to help yeah. you be successful in life? Do anything. You can become a podcast uh, podcaster, right? right. Yes, and <laughs> lots of money. Just be swimming yeah, in it. swimming in it. Yeah. Uh, you'll go far unless yeah. you already have unless you're Conan and already have an established base. Yep, you gotta work your way up for it. But I think what that scene to me was trying to do was like, okay, you're in New York and there's people everywhere. So I think there's uh, the sense that as long as you're with there's people everywhere. Like, what's going to happen while you're around all these people? She gets right. the call from her date that she's meeting. I think that was the actor's uh, natural voice. It is, which is the um, another mechanism that has changed in this open. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. not Ghostface calling. It's uh, some guy that she's going to meet. And so mm -hmm. she wanders out into the street, and then he eventually lures her down an alley where she's attacked by Ghostface. Mm -hmm. And Ghostface stabs her to death. And it's kind of brutal. Like, uh, Samara Weaving screaming is really upsetting. Like, she's a really good scream queen because oh, no. she's it's quite brutal. the victim. Yeah, yeah it's aren't, brutal. And aren't then... horror movies now more brutal I'm... than they were in, well, I mean, in the 90s, definitely. Depends. Yes. In the 90s, The 70s, yes. I remember, like, you know, you had those super brutal uh, Tom Savini-style mm -hmm. murders. Um, but I think, like, some of the appeal to me personally in some of those was the... the the effects work how it was done because it's like, oh, my God, that looks so real yes. and so hideous. Now it's all computer assisted, but it's just there's a brutality that I know because I saw Cocaine Bear, too, where mm -hmm. the brutality is used as a punchline. Yeah. It's like so you're going for a level of shock. Basically, yeah. that's it. You assume your audience is so dulled to everything that we're going to dial up the brutality of it. I, mean, I do sound like an old man. No, you, you do because you're the <laughs> you two both complained that Megan was PG-13. So like this is the opposite of that. Yeah, and you're, and you I, know, and, I'll take but maybe this. Maybe not for it's. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'd maybe rather I, have the over. You the could top be stuff. R for also for like uh, thematic stuff as yeah. well. Sure. You can yeah. do that. But I mean, yeah, this one had. I mean, it was. But the only thing that I was, I guess, kind of disappointed by is if you're going to do this kind of brutality, it would be cool. If, you know, when you stab somebody in the heart, that I don't see the the blade like moving in a way that it's obviously not connected to the person. <laughs> you know, it destroys yeah. the illusion for right. me. And then you're like, okay. I get for safety, but Tom mm -hmm. Savini would have figured this out, mm -hmm. you know, and done yeah. it for real. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but now we know that the like, all they do is they, uh, you know, attack somebody with a, a hilt and the blade is put in. And yeah, later. That's, un, uh, that's unfortunate. Or but they shoot in a way where you can't see it. The thing that surprises us, because this is how Scream 6 is going to uh, do a tweak on that cold oh, open. When she's getting stabbed and she steps backward and her ankle twists in those heels like it twists backwards. Oh, that was almost worse than her getting stabbed. I'm like, she's getting stabbed and she's like stepping back on the concrete in a way that looks like she's going to break her ankle. Oh. Yeah, none of it looks comfortable. No. Yeah. Nope. But what's the what's the big surprise? The big what? twist yep. on our scream opening. Yep. The ghost face gives his final slash to Samara Weaving, who says, now I'm seeing red. And then he, he gets his face splashed with blood and he leans down to her. And then he unmasks himself. Mm -hmm. And we're like, oh, my God. Who's this that is, guy? This is a new thing. You know, someone actually, in my theater literally said, oh, really? who's that guy? Yeah. I'll <laughs> preface this by saying I had a bad theater experience. It was probably only 25 percent full, but 25 percent full. The weirdest, wor worst audience in the world. <laughs> there was a guy like, you know how you buy the assigned seats now? Yeah. So my husband and I bought seats on the end. And when we looked, there was no one else sitting in that row. And then like 20 minutes in the movie, some guy's kids come and sit right next to us. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, and this wow. guy and this guy ha and him and his 10 year old kid, his kid was literally like jumping back and forth over the seat the whole time, not even watching the movie. And the dad was on his phone, just like scrolling the whole time. Phone open, like screen just out the whole time. I was like, did you just need like a warm place to sit or something? I think so that's you just it. bought a ticket? Like, but why are you sitting right next to me? Go sit somewhere else. And, I know, and the whole theater's probably empty. I mean, there and was. Like, when someone kept taking pictures of the screen with their flash, like constantly. 
Really? Yes, throughout the... I, this, this I, is, oh, I'm wow. done with the theater-going experience. <laughs> you know what? AMC, fix this shit, otherwise this is, it's going to collapse. You know, why am I paying a premium for this experience, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's terrible. Yeah, no, that's I mean, awful. mine wasn't anything like that, but it's mm-hmm. just, you know, now there's like no ushers or... I know they have cameras in the ceiling they that are supposedly shit. watching, but... There's barely enough like... people running the concession, you know? it's yeah. very. It seems very short-staffed every time I go. Yeah, and I know? never... There's never a crowd, really, in any of these things. I mean, mine was full. Was it? Oh, what yeah. Yeah, prime go? time, like uh, 7 7.45 yeah. on uh, Friday. Oh, yeah, yeah I go. went to okay. 9.45 on Friday, and it was... I went on a regret Thursday. It. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, well, you're saying, who's this guy? It was like, t- I actually was distracted from the movie because I'm like, who is that guy? And it took me a while, and I'm like, oh, it's Flash Thompson. Yeah, from Flash. Uh, <laughs> he's from... Uh, he's done some Wes Spider-Man. Anderson movies. And yeah. Tony Rivolori. Yeah. He, uh, which, which I think he's a good actor. Mm-hmm. Um, But... I was, yeah, how shocked were you at this moment that we get a ghost face reveal right off the beginning? Like, what are you th- are you are you thinking? Like, is this real? Like, what are we? Like, you're kind of waiting. If this isn't the trickery, you're waiting for the trickery. It's like, wait. I thought it never- was going to be another stab movie. Yeah. Or, or actually, I thought what it was going to be is you know how later on Gail's like it's all about true crime limited series now. I totally thought there was either going to be a podcast or like a ten part Netflix like mini series on the Woodsboro killing. Something I didn't think it was real for yeah. a minute. I was just like, what has happened? I definitely thought there was something else to it. Yes. Yeah. Well, I guess where I was thinking and what I thought at that moment was I'm like, oh, this is going to be like an interesting take. They're going to do a whole movie from like Ghostface's point of view or something uh, like I that. It's still- like we're introducing this guy and he's the main character and we're going to see how he does. You oh, know, I'm like, I was so <laughs> cool. with so much hope. I'm yeah. like, holy shit, I'm in. I want to know where this yeah, goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Continue yes, with the rest sh- of the cold open. Yeah, you reveal the mystery <laughs> and then tell us how we got there. Yes. Right. That's, oh, why haven't they yeah. done that yet? Right, but even you could, like, he could be a character in the movie. Yeah. But, like, there's but also, know there's also yeah. right, yes. but also there's a partner we don't or that we don't know about, so there's still a, a reveal of yeah. who else could be helping him. Think so, of how tense that would be. Mm-hmm. Like, Oppor- right? Opportunity. I thought that was worth Because, I mean, I don't, I don't believe the trailers anymore. You no. know, like, yeah. they show you stuff and you're like, well, whatever. But I thought maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. But anyway, that's not where we're going. We, not where we're going. we do settle back into with, standard horror movie We do. <laughs> uh, we do. We follow, we follow him. His name, his character's name is, wait for it, Jason Carvey. Oh, okay. of course. He goes back to his apartment but, and he's but watching. We f- right. We follow him for a little bit, which is. And they give you a moment, because I'm sure everyone was in shock at this point, so they give you a moment where he packs up his stuff. I think he wipes down something, or he throws something away. Uh, ends up he going throws to- his murder weapons right in the dumpster next to her body. He does body. something what in the idiot. dumpster. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but he ends up, but he passes Jenna Ortega at one point mm-hmm. and talks to her, where she's just like, oh, oh shit. She's like, she go, he goes to school with her. Yeah. Right, and then he's asking the questions. He's like, is your sister going to show up or and what mm-hmm. have you there? And just like, oh. Yep. Like, the interesting yeah. things just keep coming along. And, you know, he goes back to his apartment. He he puts his mask back away and his little shrine to stab and everything. Where they, yeah. So, so many cool but ideas he, And here. he was watching uh, Jason, Jason Takes Manhattan. Jason Takes Manhattan, yep. yep. Okay, and, I, and here's where I start also getting annoyed because he walks into this apartment and I see two posters for a podcast I really love and listen to. And I'm first of all, I'm excited because I'm like, good job. But then, then there's another podcast. There's three different podcasts that have posters in his apartment alone. And yes. the more I saw them, the more I was like, well, fuck you guys. You know, because like, wow, you're, you're... I started looking for us. Yeah. Like, well, when it's just one, I'm like, okay. But when it's three, I'm like, well, now you're just like, you're kissing everybody's ass except ours, you know. And it's like come we don't on. have posters. Are, are, are we in yeah. which That's podcast? True. Who has a fucking poster for a podcast? Oh, podcast right. that do live shows. Live shows. Oh, oh right, right, yeah. right. For science. So yeah. wait, are we are we inspiring someone to be a Ghostface killer? Maybe. I'm just Maybe. I'm just saying it'd be cool to be acknowledged in the Scream <laughs> universe, and all you gotta do is put our poster up on a wall. I'm not go. asking for much here. And <laughs> if you're at the point where you're already putting up podcasts, we just what's gotta a wait. Few more, we just gotta know? wait till a fan gets into the movie making business yes. and gets in that deep where he yes. can. I know, because at this point, how many Scream movies have we covered on this show, Sean? Four. There you go. Oh my wait, God, we have did we two. Really done four. No, uh, we six. did two, three, two, oh, four, sorry, no, two, the four. First one. and this one, and then we talked. To, excuse me, we talked about Scream Five a little oh, bit. The end of the year episode. Yeah, we did. We did. Um, but then the killer gets a phone call. Yep, and he thinks it's his partner Greg. Yeah, it's his boyfriend, right? They, they live together. Was that what I was getting? Well, I think they're. Well, I mean, it could be that. I think they were just partners and talk about practicing. Like it does partners. It's yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, let's put it this way: it's an intimate relationship. I would say probably on the level that Billy and Stu were. So who yeah. knows what could be happening there? Yeah. But 
Uh, I mean, he gets a call and, and he's talking about how it felt to kill Samara Weaving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the moment. idea we're getting here is that there's he and this other guy are plotting ghost face murders. Yes. Only he has gone out and done it early or something like he that. He has. Right? I think like I think they're they talk about their practicing. So who knows what came before this? Yeah. And this, of course, like in retrospect, once you see the whole movie, raises all sorts of questions. All sorts of questions. That yes. maybe logically don't check out. And you're yep. like, what the fuck? Okay. Yeah. But whatever. So, yeah. So, okay. So he uh, is getting a call from a guy uh, uh, doing the ghost face voice. Yes. And it turns out it actually is ghost face, the real ghost face of the movie. Of the movie, let's say. Of the movie. Because he's a real ghost face, too. I know. He's yeah. a real ghost face. So he is brutally murdered. Uh, by Ghostface. He is. He finds his partner uh, beheaded or uh, in pieces in the fridge. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty shocking. It is. I wasn't. It was yeah, because it was. A, he was doing yeah. the like, you're colder, colder, yeah. warmer, warmer, warmer. And then he sees the fridge and like, oh shit, and opens it. And yeah. yeah. I did like the the one line that made me laugh out loud, and I think I was the only one in the theater that he when he was talking about why they killed the teacher, and he was like, she was a bitch. She gave me a C on my giallo paper. Right. I laughed yeah. at that. And I thought that was funny, yeah. because this they keep saying he's obsessed with Argento, and it's like, I think he's supposed to be kind of a poser, right? Like, he doesn't really know, because he got a C on his paper. Mm. But, yeah, oh, they, but yeah, he's something. the giallo guy to everybody. I think he's, that's kind of what they're getting at. Yeah. These are all, of course, lip service to the, the hardcore horror fan yeah. audience. Yes. Everybody else goes into it going like, eh, wait, what? Eh, giallo? Eh? What? Um, oh yeah, I was definitely the only like hardcore horror <laughs> fan in my audience because I was the only one talking back to the movie like that, you know. Yeah. Mm. So that's our cold open, and then we we'll get the fuck into... about movies. Yep. That's what's yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Which, Which I guess is the the the, the, the edict of... of going forward. It's like I, it okay, is. Who which gets... is a now weird thing a to say movie. in a movie. Yeah. It, it doesn't. It's a weird make thing sense. to say in a movie, in yeah. a scream movie. Yeah, in a scream movie of all movies, right? And I know weird. that they're trying. They're like, once you get to the end, they're just like, oh, I understand what they're saying. That doesn't. That doesn't make it good. For it still doesn't work for me. Uh, yeah, right, I I'm get just like, why they did it. Oh, but I like movies. Yeah, and I like these movies. <laughs> it, to me, I give a fuck about movies. To me, fuck the movies. The movies don't matter. All those lines. Every time they dropped them, it felt like when. Luke threw the lightsaber over his yeah, shoulder in the last yeah, Jedi. Like, it's it felt. I'm like, I'm paid to I sit my me. ass in the seat. Why are you insulting me? Yeah, I'm me. I'm making you money. Why are you being like, oh fuck your butt? Like it's I hate that attitude. Yeah. And if this is going to be the attitude of this franchise going forward, it's not going to be a franchise for me. Well, it's just going to be. I mean, there's because I think there later as the movie goes on, there's like certain scenes that you have to have in every scream movie. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, I got. We'll talk about them as yeah. we go. But um, okay, so we're introduced, reintroduced to our cast from Scream Five. Yes, mm -hmm. um, which is the character of Sam Carpenter. Mm -hmm. Is that Melissa? Melissa Barrera. 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 Yep. Barrera. Melissa Barrera. She's in um, therapy. Mm -hmm. Yep. Which I I gotta be honest up front. I think Melissa Barrera is like one of the most attractive women I've ever seen in my entire life, especially in that end scene of the movie, which we'll talk about. But. And so that colored my perspective a little bit because I just am like so. Like, oh. It's like when looking at you know how when you look at Gal Gadot and she's like almost hard to look at because she's so pretty. <laughs> That's how I feel about Melissa Barrera too. So like, like half ah. the time I feel like I'm not hearing what she's saying. I'm just like, ah, she's so pretty. God, what her arms are dead, she you know? do? What she do before uh, in the Heights? She, in that, the Heights that oh, musical. Okay. She's in, uh, she was on like Spanish television for forever. I she guess. did a star show called I think it's called Vita. Mm -hmm. Something that like that. Way. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah, I hadn't seen her before. Yeah. Scream. Jenna Ortega obviously is like having her moment. Huge. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. If they didn't sign her up for three movies, they're in trouble. Yeah. Right. Um. So they're sisters from the last movie. Now they're going to mm -hmm. college. Jenna Ortega's in college. Yes. Uh, Sam is supporting her and also looking out for her. She's mm -hmm. become the uh, the smothering mother. Just to she's looking out for her sister because she doesn't want anything to happen to her again. Which like it's only been a year. Like yeah. So yeah. to me, like. None of her behavior is that unreasonable. It's it's barely been a year. Like and I understand wanting the, to move past it. Yeah, but. she's right. super hyper protective, and like you can't go out and without saying this, or you can't. Mm -hmm. You have to take this Tell with you. you or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, obviously, they went through this thing a year ago. Right. Um, right. The you, psychiatrist I thought was like the shittiest world's shittiest. He's psychiatrist. the worst psychiatrist. It's psychiatrist. a movie psychiatrist. Okay, he's she, horrible. She handles this completely wrong, though. You cannot say to a therapist psychologist whatever i like killing people and expect them to do nothing they are mandated reporters they have to report that stuff sure she said i like killing people to a he mental health professional and then got mad when he said i have to do my okay job. so just uh, so you're dropping something there uh, <laughs> like you got to give us some context to that so 
her character, <laughs> she, right? It felt like, good is what she said. I could not fucking believe I was hearing this at this point. Yeah, because, well, her whole thing at the, okay, so for Scream 5, right, mm-hmm. we find out, right, it was revealed like, yeah. that Billy Loomis, the killer from Scream 1, yes. is her biological father. Yes. I think Janet Ortega is from a different. Yeah, they different have that father. conversation. Yes. And so. It was very much the, like, I'm adopted conversation in Malignant. It was that tense. Right. So she, throughout the fifth movie, is haunted by the ghost of Billy Loomis or the she's a, visions in her head. Visions in her we, head. I feel so like that it's means unclear. That's, that's her talking ghost. to herself mm-hmm. as the as her dad yes. Billy Loomis. Yeah. And we find out at the end of uh, of Scream Five that uh, because she has serial killer blood, you don't fuck with the daughter of a serial killer. Yeah. I hate that we have to talk about that line again, yeah. but okay. Mm-hmm. Well, it gives context to this, yes. right? Because she's still like haunted by the fact that she loves killing people. She's like, it yep. felt good. Yeah. Yep. This is her secret weapon, her superpower. Or did it feel good to maybe stab the guy who'd been torturing you for your ex, your boyfriend that betrayed right. you? Right. Maybe yeah. that felt yeah. good, and you know, you haven't killed anybody else, so maybe, yeah. uh, maybe it just felt good for that moment, and you're over reading this a little bit, but right? Whatever. No, but this but- is where the movie's going. This is her ace in the hole, right? I mean, because it's not it's this her is superpower, not, Colin. It's it's not a Thomas Harris level exploration of, uh, you know, like uh, what it's like to think like a serial killer. Sure. Yeah. And they never really do anything with it. She never seems to be like, you know, I mean, aside from her surface level trouble, you know, she's troubled by the fact that, you know, mm-hmm. she she enjoyed killing the, that mm-hmm. guy yes. or that she's haunted by Billy Loomis's ghost. If they wanted to, like, paint st- her in, like, a Dexter light, right? Like, this vigilante sort of thing uh, where she channels this power for good. I would accept that. Wait till that. Scream 7. Wait yeah, till Scream 7. Scream <laughs> I mean, 7. where else can they go with yeah, it? They yeah. have to... But, like, but I don't feel like that's what they were getting at with this movie at all, you know? No. This movie seems to have What's a lot of dropped of ideas and half to bake shit, But you what know? is the point of this? Like, you know, like... I, I mean, it just... It, it makes show her that a she really struggling weird... struggling with something. Well early on Mm -hmm. but like i mean this is like part of her character makeup is that she has serial killer dna Mm -hmm. right which somehow makes her then somehow better than the other serial killers who are out to to kill her Uh (laughs) or something it's like it makes her the Quote, it's a weird quote, good one. The good serial Which, killer. She's this the good is, ghost. This face. is the problem I have with this the, this new series. What is your moral compass for this movie? Yeah. It's all over the fucking place. Like yeah. there's a magnet under it. It's nuts. Oh yeah, we're messy now. Yeah. It's but it but it's just Billy Loomis is a fucking cheerleader. It, yeah, like seeing where we started and where we ended up, it just <laughs> Wow. It's the like they never they saw change. the first movie. You know, know what I'm saying? It's like it's a really weird place. Just, to although Scream it. Five tells you they saw that movie so many times, it's like Scream Six actually thinks the movie does create psychos. It's like they took those lines from the original movies and kind of rearranged them, and they're like, "That's our movie now." <laughs> I don't know. It just, I don't understand anything these movies are trying to say about any of this stuff. Yeah, it's so unclear. They're just trying to come up with a plot to keep you know going and, and surprises and shock. You know, it's yeah. like how can we subvert? The audience's expectation, but not, right. not should we make a good movie, but like let's but let's go an, and get these parts. As an audience member, I need to be clear on who my protagonist and antagonist are, yeah. and neither of these movies have been able to do that. And I thought that that was a stupid idea when they introduced it in the last movie, but they lean into it here. I was like, oh wow! So you're didn't you get any audience notes, or am I yeah. on the outside of this? I don't know. They lean into a lot of things I didn't think they were going to lean into yeah. from the last one. It's just like, oh, that's the thread you wanted. You decided to keep going with, right? Okay. Yeah, so I guess about that, like uh, several of the other uh, castmates from Scream 5 have also gone to New York. The core four are there. They're This is what they call themselves, the core four. See, they're trying so hard to make themselves the new Scream people. They're just writing it into the scripts now. Because we would come up with eventual nicknames for, you know, the main trio and all that stuff from the original Screams. Like, they don't want to wait for that to organically happen, yeah. they want you to d- they accept it. This mm-hmm. is what they yeah. are. Yep. So they have to make it a whole running thing in this movie. Yeah. Like that makes but them I the think core that is that is a if you watch that, that's a trend of modern uh movie writing. Like they will do that. They go out of their way to enunciate things in order so this yeah. is how you'll pick this it is, up yeah, later this in is the, how, look, uh, that's why Final Girl gets thrown around so yeah. much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, okay, so they're all, uh, going to college, um, and then there's the, uh, reveal that the, the, um, the 
professor has been murdered. And so yes. Sam is like, all right, that's it. We're done. We're packing up and we're leaving. Smart move. In, in my opinion, like I see nothing wrong with the way she's Her immediate this. thing yeah. is to be, and because it is, um, what's the first thing we see on, not, was it the professor? No, and the, and the, the discovery of them. The two guys. The two guys mm-hmm. as well, which I don't remember if they said in the news report. Something about the, ghost phase. That they were, they yeah. found a bunch of stuff there and that these were killers and whatnot. By the way, they do the, all the news stuff not well, as no. far as I'm concerned. No. I think it's horrible. It's, yeah. it's only, maybe it's because I worked in news for yeah. what have you, but it's horrible. It's <laughs> absolutely every, horrible. Every I bet movie you two see the seams in oh, yeah. all that. I, I, well, they tell, well, they they don't tell do you right. things that like no newscast no would actually tell you. Would do, you know. And I'm like, that. Uh, the second time he pops, I'm like, that guy's going to get oh his God. ass suit off. Can you guys Can you guys do like a, like a Hong Kong plot hole, like YouTube channel, but it's you guys pointing out inaccurate news like segments and movies. I mean, I you're could just, do that all you're like, day. Like, yeah, you John Madden movie. the shit out of it. Every, and be, no, that's what I'm saying. Right. You guys should oh, yeah. do it. You, and you, you guys are the authority because you both worked in news for a very long time. So, yeah. like, well, I will flex my authority now and say they did it bad in this yeah, movie. Bad yeah, in this movie. <laughs> just, bad in the Batman. Okay. Uh, that was the last one. I was like, no. Um, <laughs> I love that. I, love, I don't have this perspective, so I love hearing this lens that you're watching oh, yeah. through. It's probably like me looking at like menus or stuff designed in movies that just like, just like no uh, that's uh, so wrong yeah the exactly. kerning is off <laughs> right <laughs> fix the kerning yeah. is that what it's called yes that's okay. a thing kerning is a thing yeah. <laughs> fix the kerning yeah. <laughs> well um this is also where our uh the theory of um sam being uh the killer from scream 5 comes up no, I tell me about that. The now, Reddit conspiracy theory they literally are scrolling reddit and 4chan at that one they scene. are I like, it's Jesus. i think it's mentioned uh, so, so yeah, and then they get on the phones and they see that there is uh, an online presence that thinks Sam orchestrated the entire events of Scream Five and then framed Richie and Amber for it. Yeah, this is also very feels very Which, forced upon why? us. Why? Conspiracy theories it's because that's, she's the daughter of a serial killer and she can't control it. She just I mean, well, that transforms like a werewolf. <laughs> but I think that's part of it because that information gets out to the public, yeah. which it wasn't there. In Scream right, 5. Right. So it gets out, and then they start connecting the dots. Oh, she's the daughter of Billy Loomis. She probably orchestrated this and all this stuff. Right. Yeah. And which could have led to also an, a, a better storyline for Gail Weathers, mm-hmm. but I think we'll get there. Ooh, yeah, we'll get there. Because I think she could have had a better storyline with them than what she got in this movie, but again, I agree. we'll get there. Yeah, because um, it's a, the movie's making a comment on, I guess, like how uh, social media, uh, yeah, uh, you know, just something can start a fire and light, and it doesn't right. necessarily and people mean will just it is true. That. And yeah, yeah, so much so that but that's is... not the plot of the movie, no, or it's not. like wh- but, they don't incorporate it in any real way, meaningful well, uh, way, not in any meaningful way. But it, it just what what they're trying to itch, they're trying to show what they think is like. This online stuff gets so out of control that it's manifesting in real life by people walking by Sam oh, and, yeah, attacking and attacking and yelling her, her and everything. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you're fucking crazy. Yeah, I, okay, yeah. if you, I'm sorry. If <sighs> we live in a moderately sized town. If, if there was someone that we all knew like murdered somebody under any circumstance would you guys like go up and confront no. them in public no. no because they're a fucking murderer right like, and no one's like, gonna walk you past know what you. they're capable of right like, and the, and, and the uh, according to what this movie is like it's not like these people planned it they just walked by her and accidentally they like, and they're like did, fuck they're like college you. students yeah didn't they call her murder girl yeah, like, or the, murder psycho or something yeah, but, yeah. yeah. but these i yeah. mean i had this experience too again i keep on watching these movies and just going like wow this is like a horrible representation of like american youth to like other yeah. you know like because movies go all over the world and you right. watch this like why would you want to come here the people <laughs> are so fucking awful yes. to each other yeah. Yeah. in the movies the it's first like, chance they get yeah, yeah it's just people are like horrible. you can't just walk by someone exactly. like, oh there's the one who may have murdered people like why is it that personal to you that you're attacking these people it, it honestly it kind of reminded me of uh, i hate to bring it up it reminded me a little bit of halloween ends when people were just harassing jamie lee curtis yeah. being like you talk yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. it had that yep. same energy just you know? like, well, i don't think this is how people react to i've been to new york many I mean, times people really do mind their own business there like people everyone's focused on their day and trying to survive their day they're not gonna like confront you right, like that you yeah know? which may have worked better if we had some you know like when samara weaving gets killed some, yeah like people who may have just stopped and like looked and then kept, and then kept walking. walking. Yeah. At a certain point when she's getting steps, I'm like, I'd be like, okay, that's New York. Somebody just yep. put their head down, keep mm-hmm. on going. Yeah. But yeah. Well, the core four have some friends. They I go to a that. party there. Uh, Sam is having a secret affair with the guy who lives across the apartment Cute boy, block. They call him, this yes. guy's performance. What the fuck is it? 
It's weird. They he's cast bad, him because right? he looks, he has a kind of, a, I thought, he a an sinister in- look, right? Okay, it's but- like, so you could think that maybe because eventually yeah. we got suspects and you're like, oh, it could yeah. be him. But he is written to basically do the opposite of everything that you think bad boyfriend is going to do. He's completely understanding. You're just, very, very much right. So very like, 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 smart. Where he's just like, don't trust me. Don't trust anybody. Yeah. yeah. It's something like, about, I understand why you need a, to do he it. He has a full ladder in his apartment. This yeah. dude is prepared. He's his, prepared. Yeah. Something about his performance really did not work for me. And I think it, he looks a lot. There's a guy in the boys that looks almost exactly like him named mm. Tomer Capone that plays Frenchie. And I'm like, I, at first I thought that's who it was. And now I'm like, I really wish that would have been him because mm-hmm. it would have at least been a less stilted and awkward performance I guess. yeah and again yeah. i think they're whatever it is they're hoping like well this will go towards him being a suspect as a killer because yeah. he's intense yeah but then he sees the killer across the way and is trying mm-hmm. to warn you know everybody in the apartment i did kind of like this part i he's like i see you motherfucker and yeah. i just yell at him and everything he sees ghost face in there ghost yeah. face attacks the well hold on when we get a, a before that we get um the roommate no, no, no. We get, because they're all in the apartment and everything, mm-hmm. when they see the first police report of the killings and everything, mm-hmm. when they say they're going to leave, um, that's when Sam and Tara leave the apartment. I forgot mm-hmm. for what reason. Or, or, I think uh, Sam is going to go like to the police or something, and Tara's like, no, I'm coming with you. Mm-hmm. Then they get their first phone call from the new killer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then Ghostface jumps out of nowhere, and this is when they chase them to the bodega. Mm-hmm. Bodega is the first one. Okay. Then we move on from there. Did you guys see the name of the bodega? It happens, Ape Snakes. Ape yeah, <laughs> I love that. That's a Wes Craven's porn director name. Was oh, it? Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's great. Um. <laughs> I love that. Like that. That kind of stuff. I like got me because I was like, "That's for me," you know. Yeah, right. I guess no, I, like, I did that's not a know deep that. Cut. Yeah, that's, that's pretty great. But no, the it feels like the a- attacks on the sisters start happening right off the yeah. bat. Like we don't mm-hmm. even get a chance to settle in and kind of hang with them for a minute. We are immediately back into people getting killed. Yeah, and she goes to the police, but the police tell her you can't leave town because you are a suspect. We didn't know where you were. Of course. Um, the police captain or police guy, it's uh, Dermot Mulroney. Well, yeah. like, her ID was found oh, at the, at the yeah, apartment, at the, so that's why she's a person. And that means, did they, wait, did they explain this? How this got how her ID got there? No, no it just shows Dermot Mulroney finding it. Yep. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That was inaudible Again. for podcast people. I was shaking my head vigorously. Well, later, I guess we can we can assume how it got there based on right. when we find out that the yeah, the, which is I'm starting to believe. Mm. But okay, okay. Mm. So so anyway, Dermot yeah. Roll Roney. Which like if you would have told me he'd be in a screen movie in 2023, I'd be like, what? Like me? Yeah. I'd be like, no, you mean 1997? He was in a screen movie, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. He's what 50 something years old. He is right? 50. Yeah, I mean, but he's, but he's of that age. But I thought he was miscast for this movie yes. and I don't know why or something about his performance I'm like yeah because every single line that he would deliver it's just the guy's natural delivery but it was like this is not the character no. that you're playing you know it's no. like you're trying but you don't fit this you are not the hardcore police captain no. his daughter it turns out is Sam's college dorm roommate that's how he's connected to mm-hmm. this, right? Tara, well, mm-hmm. technically, Tara's room. Oh, Tara's room. Tara's room. Yeah. Tara's yeah. Jenna Ortega. So uh, he ends up. Uh, well, yeah, so- when we get the friends together, it is the 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 new people are Quinn, who is Tara's roommate. What's her name? Who is uh, uh, Mindy's girlfriend? Uh, Annika. Annika. Yep. And then uh, Jack Champion, who is Ethan. Yeah. Who is also apparently- nothing performance from that guy. Agreed. Well, Absolutely, they're, they're but, trying to make these people and like, I mean, again, whenever you do these comparisons, right, the core four or whatever, like you remember the people in Scream were like, you recognize their faces. These yeah. folks are like, I don't, you know, I, I, maybe nobodies. I'm just out of touch. No, I don't, I, recognize, no, I don't recognize them. Any I had people. nothing. Yeah. Dead I face nothing. nobodies. All of them. Just yeah, so and their they, performances they don't, don't help stand them. out yeah. to me. I mean, I know Jenna Ortega. Yeah. And I yeah. know uh, Melissa, uh, Melissa Burton yeah. because of Scream, exactly, the last yeah. Scream. I'm like, right. okay, she's final girl. And I don't really care about anybody else. Um, so there's a killing that happens off camera where apparently the killer sends photos of the murder of Quinn, the roommate to the other people and then attacks like the entire room. Yeah. Cause we get to that scene and it's just like, Oh, Ghostface is there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I'm just like, wait, what? Like it's, it's out of nowhere. Like he's just in the room. Yeah. Which, it, <laughs> the, but which the, it, seems... it exonerates the guy across the way because it he's yeah. witnessing it. So it's like, right. okay. But I don't feel like, and I've, I've been to a few apartments in my lifetime, let's say. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's that easy knowing the reveal. It becomes easier. But I don't think it's that easy to get into an apartment 
in New York where nobody else is going to no, recognize most, you. Most of them have doormen and stuff, you know, or, or like else, security, just, just buzz the, in or like, something. They're fucking New York apartments are fucking boxes. There's not many ways into yeah. that place. So like well, you're and saying the gap between these is gigantic. They don't leave that yeah. much space between buildings but in New York City. You you you're like saying realistically, you'd be able the cops would be able to go like, well, this guy went in. And so that's mm-hmm. why, you know, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, but we don't even touch on that. The no. detectives are flummoxed, and, and so they have to call the FBI. Who I was like, wait, what? Well, I mean, we I, well, we well, kind of skipped over there. the bit, bodega scene a little bit. Well, like, I a lot of people like this scene. I didn't, especially because we basically saw the whole thing in the trailer. Yeah, um, I don't understand why there's tension because he has a gun and they don't. Why is he like slowly stalking them? Like he. They, oh, you're saying unarmed. bodega. I'm like, what the, the, well, the, the supermarket? Store. Right, yeah, gotcha. so they call okay. the yeah, okay. yeah, 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 bodega. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> why, why is this right. a cat and mouse situation at all? You know what I'm saying? He has the upper hand. Why is he? I mean, he you know, does. What I just do they, don't and what get do it. What do they do? They throw a can and they, they push the shelf over. Oh yeah, they push the shelf over, and, and then he's leave. able to push that oh. back up and drop the mask and go out the back door that was locked with the key. So he had to get the key off the ground. There's no time. This is also why we can't skip things because I'm going to introduce a plot thread that I don't think I. I will uh, wrap up because mm-hmm. they didn't. But a scream mask gets left at a mask gets left at the crime scene, yep. which turns into a thing that happens at the crime scenes. Scream yep. masks get left. Mm-hmm. Now I have a problem here because I don't know what's happening. We have a shrine, which we'll get to, yep. but which are m- all movie props according to this movie. No. According to this movie, it's all movie props because. Okay. But the masks are the real masks. That's what I'm. That's why I'm. Where they're matching yeah. DNA off of them. Yes. I'm like, what's real here, and what is movie? That's what's confusing about the museum is because yes. um, it said that it's a memorial to the movies because he loved the movies. So is this yes. stab movie stuff, or is this the real killings that inspired stab the stab stuff. movies? But with mixed with real stuff, yeah, is it what, is yeah. it murderabilia or is it movie memorabilia? It sounds like he's it got both. both yeah, sure, okay. So he's leaving it's the unclear, murderabilia as the evidence. Right, but he yeah. still Which has. I suppose when, when we you get think, to the when we get to our reveal, yeah, will make more sense of yes. how it's. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So much is 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 latched onto that one thing that makes everything in this movie possible, well, and, but it should also make it impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because it's just written off in like mm-hmm. a line how this stuff is acquired. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So a lot uh, of stuff is written off in a line or two in this movie, and that's my big problem with this. There's so much. The, the dialogue's bad in this movie. It's, bad. it's corny as fuck. It's just this they're movie's connecting. So fucking corny. Yeah, they're connecting like, dots with just a, a throwaway line. And you're like, wait, yeah. that's not how that works. Exactly. Right. <laughs> exactly. That was my entire sentiment the whole movie, Colin. That's not how that works. Like that was, and like. It really made me miss Kevin Williamson so much. Yeah, like yeah. that was really he is the voice of Scream. He is, I'm sorry, he is. Like and it, this to me this doesn't even come close. No. You know? Um, no, we have we've gone beyond uh something mm-hmm. at this point. Um uh, but we got all right, so Bodega, we introduced mm-hmm. the threat of masks being left behind. They have mm-hmm. to call the FBI. That's why the FBI is called they in. They go to the cops <laughs> and the FBI is uh are they called in or she just show up? Feels like she just shows up because she heard oh, the about FBI, the, yeah, the FBI is here. Mm-hmm. The FBI yep. is here. It's dun, 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 Kirby Reed Kirby has Reed. returned to the Scream franchise. Justice for Kirby is finally served. Woo. No, I, 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 okay, I, I would disagree. I'm, but a, yes. I'm a defender of Scream Four. It's one of my favorites. You can go back and it's listen to our Scream better Four every ep- day. You can go back and listen to our Scream Four episode and hear me fight for that movie. <laughs> um, I, w- I was very excited when I heard they were bringing her back. Hated what they yeah, did with her. Hated yeah, why what they did with her. Wish they wouldn't have. Thirty-five million dollar budget, and that's the best wig they could give her. My God, best that wig. was a hair helmet. Just, it that's was the best not good. dialogue we could give her. Yes, um, well, but I, I just don't believe anything they attach to her character. I don't. No, it's just she, weird. It was yeah. how do we get Hayden Panettiere back in the because there's fan yeah. service, you know. Obviously, yeah, right. They like her from she survived Scream right. Four, so bring her back. And so she's with the FBI now, mm-hmm. and is just investigating this because she has a personal history with ghost. Which I'm pretty killings. sure, like. In the police force, it's the opposite. If you have a personal investment in a case, you can't work on it, right? Yeah. That's usually I, how it goes. I know, but like, that, that was the thing. That was, that was driving me nuts, too, because yeah. like the dad of the murder victim is assigned to the case. Or, yeah. you know, and they, prior and, 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 prior yeah, and, to the And he her, said it. He's dad. like, they gave me the case mm-hmm. because of it. I'm like, like that's, that's, not, that's how not how that works. Um, and you guys probably know that from being in news, too, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, there's talk conflict of interest here, and they really don't like it when you do that. Yeah, and I just... 
I feel like there's a lot better ways you could get her into this movie. It just like when, I like that Courtney Cox called it out like you're in the fucking FBI because that's exactly what I was thinking. There was no <laughs> indication that this is where the path would take her. You know, like it's no. and it, it she does feel too young to be an FBI agent. You no, know, like it's, didn't she make a comment on that? She's like yeah, 30. she's like I'm thirty. I'm thirty. Yeah. Oh, because uh, yeah. Courtney Cox is in this movie. Yep. Uh, I'm playing Gail Weathers again, who mm-hmm. is uh, who is completely retconned uh, <laughs> and done dirty by this movie compared to the last one. For How fucking no dare reason. They? Yeah. For no reason. I, I'm which offended gets, by what they did. Which to her gets character. into my uh, uh, what I had, what I thought of would have been a good way to reintroduce her because when she does come in, first of all, mm, okay, <laughs> don't be angry, Sean. Don't yell. Uh, okay, <laughs> because when she is reintroduced, um, the relationship between. Sam and Tara and her is fractured because Gail did what she said she wasn't going to do. She wrote a book. Yep. In fact, and I don't even know if it's in the movie at all. It's called Requel, uh, Tara Returns to Woodsboro. Mm. Terrible act, title. Holy shit. Is, yeah. But none of her books had good titles. <laughs> well, that's true. If you they, go back yeah. and look at them, they're all horrible. Even Sydney's. Knife of Doom. <laughs> Sydney's was bad, too. I think too. it's Knife of the Hunter, but yeah. Sydney's was out of darkness. Like, that's, right. that's they're bad. They're all <laughs> bad. But then she goes into this because they question her, and you kind of got a thing right here, and it's like, you said, you, and they say, you did what you said you wouldn't do. And she's like, plus, and she turns back into opportun- opportunistic Gail Weathers, and I she's like, that. well, somebody had to do it. What she could have done, or what I think could have been done, you get the whole theory of people blaming Sam for the murders, right? Mm-hmm. And that whole thing comes down. There's massive online audiences who mm-hmm. think she's the killer and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, as, with one line, you can be like, Gail being like, I wrote that to get the facts straight for you. Mm-hmm. I wrote it so that, yes, I benefited off of it, because that could be the two ways that right. Gail is. I benefited off the book, sure, but I did it to make sure that people knew that you weren't the killer. Mm-hmm. All right? Mm-hmm. We all got something out of it, and that's an easy way yeah, yeah, to yeah. get her to write the book, but also have, like, sympathy for that relationship. Yep. But right. no, they just fucking take Gail's legs out and just being like she's got to be just Gail she's Weathers. just got to yeah. be Gail well, yeah. and we can't have growth we got to backtrack here, it here's the thing so the biggest podcast of all time Serial was that was a newspaper <laughs> journalist that did that podcast mm. And that like set the podcast world on fire. It got someone out of jail. It got convictions overturned. That podcast had a gigantic impact on the yeah. true crime world and podcasting in general. Why not just literally copy the template of Serial for this movie and make Gail Weathers, the investigative journalist, have Melissa Barrera arrested for this crime. Gail's going to use what she's got to help prove her case and make it like a fucking court drama with flashbacks to like the killings and stuff. Like, you could almost it, do something And like it'd that. be more yeah. redeeming and more respectful to the characters, you know? It'd be, Gail would really redeem herself if she took the right side in that situation like but what is the point of just like reversing her arc like this it's to, disrespectful to reverse it's, it back yeah it's just because it's like it felt to me it was like there's a type that yeah. her character you know is and so we have to keep that's the gail weathers type you know yeah. that's been established by the other movies yeah. i think like sean said you can't grow the character I hated yeah. the double punch too. I really fucking hated that. Oh, oh yeah, the yeah, choreography yeah, was yeah, not yeah. well, and just great. We're literally doing the exact same thing. You know. Well, I got that sensation a lot in, yeah. in that second half of the movie, mm-hmm. right? Because we're after the suspense sequences in the corner store, and uh, maybe not in the subway it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, we haven't. Had you know, the, those things and, and some of the attacks. So it starts doing those scream scenes, mm-hmm. which is the punching of Gale. Yeah. Um, you got the. The Randy character. How is is it Mindy? How Mindy. is she? Mindy Meeks Martin. How is she related to she, Randy? That, he's their, he's uncle. their uncle. Okay, so she gets to give everybody sitting down, and she oh. now we're in a franchise, and but, you're like, what the fuck? I, are the I, rules I, of it a- feels so out of place because there hasn't been movie dialogue up until no. Time. These characters do, rarely t- talk about movies in this. Like this isn't this. It doesn't make it feel like a screen movie. You no, know? that and she's laying out shit that is not revelatory to any part nope. of this. It's, it's going to be bigger shit. this time. It's going to be bigger. It's going to be gorier. Can't trust a, anyone. Can't tr- yeah, just like... Legacy characters aren't safe. Bullshit. Yep. Oh, I was going to say that... You and, can't say that and not follow through on it. Biggest, there's that's that. my biggest issue with this movie. You can't do that. Yeah. And just... Yeah, because apparently they are. Apparently, stabbings don't matter. Sean, your your one sentence review of this movie sums up how I feel. You said, remember when stabbing people mattered? And that's how I feel. Like... like there is so much stabbing in this movie, and un like even there's certain parts that there's just unneeded stabbing. Yeah, like there's a part where Jenner or Tega drops down onto someone, and as she drops down, she gets stabbed again. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. If I see one more person get stabbed in the gut, 
Yeah. Or in the yeah. side Where'd right she there? she get stabbed the, the second time? She got stabbed right here. Oh, because yeah. this is the first time she got stabbed in the kidney, if she I remember. She got stabbed in the back. Somebody yeah. came up and stabbed right. her in the kidney. And then she yeah. got stabbed in the front again. Yep. And, and then she's, she's bleeding profusely. And then she then just she's walks like, you ready out. to go home? At the end, I was like, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah, but then Who somebody you, else. People? I mean, like, this movie, this is where I guess I had, that was the, you know, by the time you leave the theater, there's been everybody, everyone in the main cast gets stabbed, I think, multiple times. Some of them. Do get stabbed multiple times, but at the same survive. time, sometimes. Yeah. Oh yeah, so Everybody Gail survives. gets like attacked Gail in her apartment, is. and she gets stabbed multiple times, and she dies. Okay, this choreography to of Sid, you know, this like tell Sydney he didn't get me, mm-hmm. and then there's I think there's an ADR line from a paramedic. We've got a pulse. Yeah, yeah, we got a faint yep. pulse. Yep. Where I was like, what are they doing here? Like they were testing this with audiences. Should. He, because she's never seen through the rest of the movie. No. They yeah. saved they say her she's in the hospital. through a line of dialogue, yep. ADR yeah, yeah. dialogue, because mm-hmm. she got stabbed a bunch of times. You know she's what? I, I'll say it is on screen that they oh, say okay, we have okay. a faint pulse because yeah. a woman says it. I remember her. But there's so many people being stabbed Ignore in this that. movie that you just kind of sit there going like, at the end, I was unsure. I still am to this day. Unsure. Gail is alive. Who yeah. is alive and who is dead? Dead. Everyone's alive. Everyone's alive. As we'll get to. Yeah. Oh, okay. And we'll get to. Yeah. Uh, uh, you don't ignore that. No, we can't. We can't. We, we must. No, we can't. All right, well, we're in the right, third right. act. Okay. No, no. We still okay. no because there's so about, many little mini things. Yeah, there, I feel like I will say about this movie. Like, I don't hate it. This is no Halloween ends, but it does have really great like action set pieces. And I'm going to say they're action set pieces. They're action horror set, set pieces. Yes. I really like the ladder chase. I thought that was done really well, especially for it being shown in the trailer. I thought we had seen all of it, but him grabbing Ghostface, yeah. grabbing the ladder and shaking it up and down while Annika's on it with a stomach stab. Yeah. She got the worst stomach stab. I know, I thought, she got dragged she did, up she went the rib up a little cage. Bit, yeah. Yeah. It would have been, it it been f- hanging out a little bit. Yes. And I was like, oh, it's going to fall It would have been funnier if they'd yeah, fallen if they out. Fall out. But, oh, wanted it so bad. She was falling on her stomach wound on that ladder while he was shaking it and between then, ooh, two apartments there could have uh, even been a good hanging on like she didn't have to go off right out the van she could have hung on dude she was one bleeding hand now her bit. guts were falling out like, i know i know you know hey it doesn't her, matter her, well, head think, hit, like, her head that hit that dumpster woo, that in was the brutal. first half of this movie i mean i wasn't like you know it was just kind of like eh, i mean it's okay and the suspense sequences were like oh, okay they're fine i mean they're I not it, scream two level no you know? but i think they're just uh the speed is what helps with that first part because it's going by so fast. Yeah. Like it, this movie's yeah. trucking. Like Before it's going. It settles mm-hmm. into the who, hows, and wheres. The second act was where it started to. Mm-hmm. It started to. Hone in. Lean on those yeah. scream scenes. Do the stuff that you've done before because this is how we have to set this up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In order to get us to our final reveal. Mm-hmm. Um, the Courtney Cox scene. I thought the choreography in that was really fun. I, I, like, like, I yeah. liked it. I mean, I was like, oh. if if you're going to go after a final, like a, like a legacy character, give them a really ridiculous long battle sequence, you know? Sure. Um, uh, her, her, I'm going to call him a roommate because I don't even know who this fucking guy is. I, I assume see boyfriend. His face. They said baby boyfriend. to he each other. Babe, so, yeah. 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 And, but who the fuck is this guy? Do we see his face? No. Turn what new... does it matter? He doesn't even have a name. She's moved on from Dewey. That's what? basically yeah. what Okay, we've great. Got. Yeah. So yeah. what? So we needed a body to throw through a bookshelf? Yep. Yes. That's his only reason yes. for being there? Yep. He might as well be a crash test dummy. He might as well he, be. That's yeah. the presence he has. There's no oh. character. But I don't think he needed it. It's just the scene. He gets taken out in the background. But it just feels like they add people like that to avoid killing off the main characters that's and it. that's what's so that's frustrating yep. they add nameless people that we know nothing about and what that guy's not even gonna get a sag card out of this right no. <laughs> and then they add people just to ha- get them killed off yeah. i mean i know these uh, 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 you're, i'm not telling you guys anything maybe you don't know it's a slasher movie this right. is what they do obviously but the way you do it also the you know can have an effect on your movie as well but you can't say bigger better legacy characters aren't safe and then anybody, pull, pull every punch anybody can die it's just like, ah. yeah and she lives Everybody lives. Yes. <laughs> Everybody lives. Ex- um, <laughs> except all five ghost things. <laughs> so, okay. So, uh, I think oh my it God, is that Gail. You, I didn't even think about oh, okay, that until I'm gonna you get just to that. said that. I'm, I'm going to get okay. to that. All right. That was a revelation a whole, gotta, for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Gail, I think, uncovers, before she is murdered, uncovers the shrine. The shrine. Yes. Gail has found the shrine because apparently they, she's investigated the two guys from the beginning of the movie. From the beginning of the movie. Kirby was as to... well. She linked them to an account, which led her back to this 
space it's that had been rented. It has all the stuff from all the Scream movies and yeah. crimes in yes. it. Yes. Mm-hmm. You're like, some, isn't this some of this stuff evidence? This is a gigantic yeah. warehouse in New York City. A gigantic warehouse yep. in New York City. What is the what what was the payment on this? What is the rent on this to know, begin and with? And how much does it cost to actually get all these pieces? I mean, that's another, you know. I mean, how he, long did this take? It's it, all the evidence from all the crimes. And you're is. like, how in the fuck? Some um, dirty cops out there, I guess, huh? Yeah, Still well, have evidence. So, that's, that's that line that uh, you know I was alluding to earlier that they just kind of throw away. You know, if you have access, you can just get whatever. Like ah, uh, okay. and just like uh, yeah, yeah. Because again, uh, I think Dermot Mulroney's character mentions that it was like, or somebody says cops will. It happens. Cops will you pay cops? You'll get evidence and stuff like that. It's yeah. very hey, easy. There you like, go. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. That's it. Okay. It's like oh, okay. It's that's <laughs> not that's not how that works. <laughs> it's- Maybe it's just because of the way we analyze things all the time and how we watch movies in general. But I feel like we are all extra sensitive to lines like that that we know are only there for one purpose like that, right? Yeah, like, I think uh, I think we can. It's like right. seeing we, it's we like we're see seeing those. the red underlined squiggle in a Word document. We're seeing this on all these lines. Right. That, like, we're, they, doing the, we're, we're, we're doing the squiggle. We're just like, yep. mm, no, yep. that's not how that's used. Yeah. You got to do that one better. We are um, clippy to this movie. Oh, okay. right. Well, we're Microsoft that, Office clippy. Like, would be- you like that better script? than? Uh, is that better than or worse than Pod Gods? <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely worse than Pod Gods. Okay. I don't think Clippy is that powerful. But I don't. I mean, they've got to bring Clippy's back terrifying. Clippy. Yeah, for, yeah. And Bob Clippy Microsoft seems like Bob. he'd be one of those. You ever watch those people who play those video games where something's just following them the entire time and they're running away and shit? No, <laughs> they're just scary faces in a in a bill. Oh, it's it's a weird thing. What if Clippy was? Is one this of those a kid? This thing you? kids watch or something? Mm-hmm. You get this from your son? You. Uh, <laughs> I think it has it. I don't know. The okay. internet's a fucking weird place. Yeah. Okay, but the movie. The movie. All right, this movie. Yes. So the sixth scream movie. Yes. So eventually, suspects. Um, oh, we get a train scene. Yeah. Get the subway. Train scene. The subway scene. Yeah. <laughs> Colin's shaking. Uh, like, we've, we've seen it. It was, it was in the whole trailer. Yep. The only thing. The only difference is you don't realize she's alone in the train car. She's separate from the other people. I well, and she's also that. not alone though. Yeah, she's Which, keeping an eye on by Ethan, Ethan who she has that fucking um, dork. That fucking dork, who's uh, she's immediately identified as a ghost face. Yeah, yeah, and who's conspicuously absent for most of she the parts of being this movie. Uh, Mindy, Mindy, uh, Mindy yeah. yes, Mindy yeah. has. She's the, the she's the movie fan. She is, and so she's pegged him down as that. And it, this is I like this kind of funny where she's like, where they're asking her where she is. She texts back, "I'm in the opposite train with Ghostface," uh, and yeah. she's like, "Get the fuck away from me." Yeah, yeah. which. Her instincts he's like are right. The, uh, what would you the 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 unassuming type in the cast? Yeah, he's he yeah, they, he is a dork. They call him that. He doesn't understand. Uh, supposedly doesn't. Why did everybody freak out when her phone just rang? Yeah, and someone tells him to keep up. You just say, okay, we might be trying a little too hard to make uh-huh. him a little like uh-huh. oh, what? I just a missed naive. the roommate. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I this ca- all hmm. climaxes in. The third act, I can't remember how we got here. Well, honest, the, the, the subway is yeah. them going to the, the shrine. Way. Okay. Yeah. And so, because they are on there, this is after... It's very possible I fell asleep during this movie. Oh, really? I think I may have nodded off oh. a little bit. We'll That's try to I'm... connect the dots for you. Yeah. Okay, um, so from so the get, train... Uh, I, I, I wanted to just the... talk about... Mindy and Mindy and Kirby have a little bit of a back and forth oh, at one Jesus. point. Oh, they do. This um, is the worst conversation. But I thought... Movie it's the movie, it, yeah. It is because, like... You can tell both of these people don't know anything about horror movies in real life and they don't know what they're saying. You know what I'm saying? Feels like it, But this is where I was talking back to the movie because I was inputting my answer to each one of these. (laughs) So, like, my husband was cracking the fuck up because... Did you yell, Friday the 13th Part 6? I did! I did! I did! So, I I, I did too. I'm like, six, six. No, because Mindy says Part 2 and you're like, what? Yeah. And then, and and Hayden says Part 4, which I think is a more acceptable More acceptable than Part 2, yes. But... I literally threw my hands up. Well, I said it with them because I thought for sure one of them was going to say part six. Yeah. And so I said part six. And my husband was like, you were wrong. And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm right. Were wrong. And then on the way home, he got near full because he apparently missed this whole thing. But I, I, was, I was driving him home. I'm bitching about the movie and the problems I have with it. And he goes, well, has there ever been a horror franchise where the sixth installment was a good one? And I said, yes, Friday the 13th, Part 6 is the best horror franchise. I was like, he's like, you don't even know your wife. Like, you cut to the outside of the car and all you see is swerving. Yeah, I was like, I was like, do you listen when I talk? Like, like we have watched this movie together. Like, you know? I just said it was Part 6. Yeah. yeah, it's not a good conversation. Between no. the two, especially, I mean, when they get to the uh, Candyman. The Candyman. What's better, can- or Candyman or the remake? Then they go both. both. And like, no. you. <laughs> I mean, I like the remake, but I. It's but, still but not I understanding say it's as good of, as the original. you know, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, 
So anyway, yeah, I, I, okay. <laughs> there's there. I know that Kirby is thrown under suspicion. Yeah, there is because uh, they're there, and then they. Mm. Why do they? Because they leave and then go. Oh no, they don't. Do they leave or they just end up going to the line? They go to the shrine, and when they, it's got this like old timey like gated elevator, right? It does. And yes. when they go up and they unlock it, and Kirby's like, "Don't worry, we'll be safe here." And I was like, "How does she fucking know that?" Like, yeah, and when she because when she and when they go in there, she says, "Yeah, I gave the whole place a look down before yeah. everyone got here." I'm like, "Uh oh, uh, yeah, we're starting to throw suspicion at Kirby." And then they get a fo- phone call yep, from, from someone, Dermot Mulroney, um, saying that yes. the FBI fired her two months ago because she was mentally unstable. Yes, yeah, I'm obsessed with all this. But stuff. I got to tell you, prior to this, and I don't remember what set me off, but I was suspicious of Dermot Mulroney. I see. I was um, suspicious the way he, of his acting. I, I, his I don't. Acting I don't remember suspicious. what. It, I see. That's why I'm like. I'm trying to go back through my. I can't him, remember him being a cop. Was it him? Very suspicious. Crying over his daughter. Uh, where he it was. Where he did horrible at it. Yeah. I, I'll help you no matter what. Yeah. I know she's dead. It's just like. Yeah. So I knew he was. I, well, I was angling toward him being in it. So when he's like Kirby was fired, I'm like, eh, it's him right. You're going, just like, you know, uh, like, yeah, because just he said we're supposed to suspect Kirby. The movie kind of goes along with that for a little bit. Yeah. Um, Kirby comes out of nowhere later, bloody, and she's like, "Some shit went down." She they knocked me over. She's totally fine. Yeah, well, they, no, that's they, right. Yeah, she but gets shot. She, she gets does. shot, and she's. Fine. But they don't. They they purposely um um mask it because you don't see it enter anywhere. It literally cuts to her being like moved, falling down, moved yeah. out of the way. Yeah, yeah. so you I can't see remember she coming back like hold on to her. Hip or something like that. Just a flesh wound, I don't think like it, all the other wounds yeah. in this movie. No, just a flesh wound. Uh, yeah. <sighs> probably. Um, well, they, they did stab that one dude because then, yeah, that was that's the scene that's coming up, right? The uh, one of the core four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, all right. So we get wait, there. who got stabbed through the door in the nose? That was a brutal one. Oh yeah, the so the psychiatrist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that uh, one, Henry Zerny Zerny that made gets, me feel icky. I didn't which, like that one. Like he, the idea of a knife going in your sinus was just yeah. Cool. He got the good shot though with Ghostface at the door who yes. looks up. Yeah. Um, that sequence I actually liked. I right. like that one. Too, yeah, that was right? good. And that's because yeah, he goes in and gets first, her file. First half. Yeah, that was first half. Or yeah. Um. Right, so we all right. We're back there. Do they get another phone call? I'm trying to remember if Ghostface just shows up, like and stabs Jen Ortega. Is that the how I this happens? Uh, well, her I and Chad so. are having their romantic thing yes. on the uh, like in the movie theater like concession right. area, yes, and they yeah, argue she just gets run up on from behind and stabbed, stabbed and then so they start one stabbing, and then he gets stabbed by two people at the same time. And then there's a, yeah, yeah, there's so, a, so okay, so Chad being. A carryover from the last movie. He's one of the there's uh, the idea that there's like a romantic interest developing through this entire. Which thing. I'm not mad yes. at. Yes, no, well, because yeah. I like that I'm they do this. this Whenever they do it, you know, because it adds that kind of like bittersweet sense when somebody in this relationship is going to get killed before they can consummate it or well, whatever. We just don't see this in movies anymore. It's the so death I'm okay of with the it, promise you know? right. of a new, you yeah. know, romantic right. relationship. Well, and it, it makes sense that they that they would get together because they're trauma bonded, right? right? right. It makes total that. sense. Yeah. yeah. And you know he looks out for her anyway. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, because you know, he saves her from the potential from the guy, date rapist yeah. or whatever. We, we never know. The movie is like totally like that guy's going that, up there. Yeah, that guy's and then going after <laughs> some guy starts pu- pushing him, he punches back, and it's like, well, look, that's the behavior yeah. of the date rapist. Mm-hmm. That was um, that whole thing was messy. Yeah. yeah. So, but Chad uh, obviously has affection for her, and so they. Uh, this is the moment where, <laughs> like, yes, and then Ghostface shows up. Two and then ghost face there's show two up. ghost faces Which, who hold him and stab him like 15 first times. First of all, is like, he still alive at the end of the movie? Yes. yes. <laughs> He's still alive. He's the one I have the biggest Stop issue it. with. Well, first of all, <laughs> they somehow missed all of his vital organs. Uh, first of all, let's go back to like double ghost face. Yeah. Because this is one of the first times that we actually get them both on screen at a the certain The synchronized point. knife yes, wipe. Yes. The synchronized knife wipe. Um, I do like this as far as imagery for a screen movie goes. Mm-hmm. I've always wanted to see this done. Mm-hmm. So I applaud them for doing that. I like the sparkly ghost face cape too. Sparkly I thought that ghost was cool. Face is good. But and then they do. There is a little chase scene, and they do end up getting Chad, and they run him through. Yeah. Like both of them stab him there, and like it's got to be at least 15, 20 times. Yeah. Right. Which, but uh, he's still adds, okay. St- at the end, he's still fine. Yeah. And he's being stabbed in the front and back at the same yep. time. But he's yep. just getting fucking stabbed. And yeah. then they do the synchronized knife swipe, yep. which is pretty cool. And then there's more chase scenes and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Dermot Mulroney. Another scene you have to have in a screen movie is killer. You got yeah. and th- it is it is the thing now. Yeah. Like but it is. We, we can't forget in the midst of all this. Every time Sam goes up to the display with with Billy Loomis's outfit, she, oh, puts, her, she puts her hand up to it and sees his face in the glass, and they have, they have like emotional connection. And I can't believe this fucking franchise had the balls to utter the word birthright. 
yep. Could you're... not fucking believe yeah. I heard that. Because he's like, birthright. just go take them all out or yeah. whatever. I'm like, her friends? What is she talking? Yeah. So Billy, the ghost, is still haunting Co- her or her psychosis. Her yes. Yeah. <sighs> Why? Uh, Does this make her a hero or a villain? I don't uh, understand. In the movie, it makes her a hero, which makes no sense because she's the daughter of the franchise's original villain. That's makes what makes her a be rooting hero. for Ghostface no matter what. Exactly. And then we're really getting there. Yep. Yeah. As far as as far as this goes. Yep. Um, to me, it's offensive because that first movie is so personal to Sydney. You know, so deeply personal to her, and that's what makes it hurt so much more. Mm. And these movies have lost any of that. You know, it's not it's not really that personal to anybody anymore. No, no. no. And no. the main characters are just kind of I mean, they're the final girl in a horror movie. You know, I mean, they basically that's yeah. what it comes down yeah. to. Yep. <laughs> um, so it was revealed that there is a third party yes. in this. Uh, so there's not just two ghost faces. There's also wait, does he come in in a third mask? No, no he, he just he comes shoots, in as himself. Yeah. He, shoots, he shoots Kirby. He shoots Kirby. Yeah, because yeah. there's a standoff and then Dermot Mulroney shoots Kirby and then, like, oh, we got her. Uh, yeah. And then the ghost faces come out and join him. And then he turns into a completely different character. Yes. Mm-hmm. Completely different. And now, then, I understand what they wanted to the do. The monologuing begins to yes. explain everything. Because I'm like, why do you always explain all this shit to your intended victims? I understand that. I will, the, got, I, always, I will always. I'm not saying it's a good idea, but I always understand. These monologuing. movies have always done that. You want Right. Yeah, it's, it is the thing to do. But you always want them to be you know, like, you know what I did to get this done? Because sometimes you can't believe it. But I want them. I couldn't believe it. To I want I them to it. do it in their own way, though. I I want everyone to stop doing Stu Macker impressions and just yes. well, just I also, give it your own flavor. You and know? also, I, I'll say it again: Scream Two is a fucking miracle mm-hmm. based on everything we've gotten after it. Mm-hmm. But they're really trying to do Mrs. Loomis in this, yeah, obviously, this is, yeah. With, oh, yeah. through motivation and also through just sheer performance mm-hmm. and it's not working no for no. dermot mulroney it's like no. these not people are all. perfectly normal even though they're psychotics yeah and right? then a switch a whole family of psychics a whole, a whole family, family of psychotics because masks come off yep. and it is real that jack champion who's been ethan so this is the goofy kid the yeah. goofy kid he was the killer he yep. yes he was one of the killers and then another reveal quinn who was Suspected dead earlier. Yeah. The, the other roommate. roommate. Yeah. She was. Yeah, we she's she alive. Was dead, but she's actually one of the killers. I was and suspect of her from the moment she said she had a brother that died. I was like, okay, so that brother was someone in the original, the Scream Five. Sure. So who was it? You yeah. know. And so, it turned out it was Richie, the main Melissa Brer's boyfriend. Yeah. Yep. In so Scream is, Five. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so then that means is, Dermot Mulroney is Richie's dad. Yep. Which, and this whole thing is revenge. If Gail Weathers wrote a book on this, shouldn't she know this? There is a lot here in this <laughs> <laughs> Melissa Brera never met her boyfriend's parents or siblings nope. ever? Nope. Guess not. Well, but that's the th- there's that <laughs> what? but we're what? also like this is also we're we're just inventing family members yep. that are angry at this shit. First of all, all right, this is where I mean I I couldn't when they when this reveal came, I, my face was just like oh, <laughs> really? And I, I felt horrified. like this for the rest of the thing I'm like mm-hmm. huh? So really? we're supposed because to believe can... that these people were fans of Stab movies. No. No, no only Richie no. was. Richie only was. Richie. That. Richie bought all the stuff. His dad helped him construct because this. Because he was a cop in... and had access to the evidence. Yep. In New... But is his dad been in New York the whole time? That, because Richie unclear. wasn't. Right. Unless he was in New York before he went and decided to go to high live school. in Modesto or, 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 yeah. 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 in California. Right. But before that, they were helping each other build a shrine, mm-hmm. but they were building a shrine just because Richie liked making movies. He wasn't a killer until part five, mm-hmm. but they've been, these people are psychos. How do you yeah. create this entire shrine <laughs> right. and think it's normal? Right. <laughs> but, but he's all, but then they, then it's a whole family of serial killers. Okay. But wait, let me, let me get this. Okay. So the two guys that we meet at the beginning, who are the two ghost faces that are killed by ghost yes, face. There are. So somehow they make contact. They must have made contact with Dermot Mulroney or the other kids who said, oh, you want to be a ghost face? Because like we're into this stuff, too. We got this shrine and we'll give you all the stuff so you can start making your own ghost face. You're doing a lot here. Like what? But that's I know. But but, but, but he's a. I think it all uh, the linchpin is that he's a cop. Which gives him, which the writers think this gives them an excuse slash it's his yeah. access yeah. Yeah. to everything. Yeah. Yeah. And that just because he's a cop, that's the key to unlocks it, and everything's easy off of that. 
Yeah. That's what they. That's why he's a cop. But what? But how long has he been a cop? What is his life before this? I know. Is, has he been a normal guy putting guys away, and this just drove him over the edge? And his kids went along with it yeah. to come back and avenge their brother's death. But he's a psycho. I don't understand. <laughs> okay, it makes no sense. Speaking of, there are five ghost faces in this movie. I know more ghost that. faces die than regular people. You, the ghost was, faces are the main deaths in this movie. That <laughs> blows my mind, and I can't even. I like that. Just like I have no words for that you know i'm just i was i didn't even he, put that together until you said that like i don't <laughs> like wow there's yeah. five they all die and that's the most so the next time they update the shrine they're gonna need like risers for how many yeah. mannequins oh, yeah. they have because we're, back row we're gonna add it. five more to this like dermot mulrooney is the most cartoonish bad he's guy awful. yeah he's that's awful his performance i think that's it where I was, no, that I was like in these scenes he really is not he's chewing it the guy oh yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. He's, but he's not yes but he's but, not the guy who should be doing this Speaking of like family and throwaway dialogue, they're Sam and Tara's mom abandoned them just cause apparently. Apparently, yes. What the fuck was that? Why did that even need to be included? First of all, but uh, also like seven wow, for the seventh come one. Back in the seventh like, one. So you guys, okay, it's like so you guys went through like the most traumatic thing a person can experience, and your mom said, "I'm out." Yes, like, so. wow, your mom's oh, a piece that of shit. Oh, happened after? The- yes. Oh, they I guess I missed that. Yeah, they mentioned oh, wow. yes. between the fifth and sixth. They she- said, oh, you know how mom is? She just can't handle it. And she, or something, it was real quick throwaway dialogue. And yeah. I was like, why, first of all, why'd you include that? But also, like, you guys are really brushing off that your mom's a piece of shit here. Like- yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, back to Dermot Mulroney, like, he has a lot, this is, again, monologuing from everybody. Jack Champion is monologuing as well. He turns Which, into wow, a completely different. this kid should not have been allowed to I don't, I, well, worst. First of all, uh, this uh, whole family ca- even- casting's all bad. It's yeah. all bad i mean uh, quinn whoever played quinn i liked her she was fine mm, didn't um, like her no i mean that's fine but uh, it goes along with everybody else but no jack mm-hmm. champion is a nothing character who who, who switch whose flip is even more crazy because you're just like ah, what are you doing um uh everyone monologues a lot right here about oh you killed their brother and all i mean that's a revelation within that as well and they're very sad about it Dermot Mulrooney rooney is very upset by this uh one of his lines was when this is when uh melissa barrera starts baiting him calls him a man calls richie a man baby and he was a limp dick fucker. Your, your, your yeah. son was and, a... and his whole thing, his only gunner was like, what, what does he say? He was a strong, virile young man? Uh, yeah, yeah, wow. And I'm just like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> That's like a parody movie would say it that. It does. You know? oh, uh, oh, speaking of which. So she attacked his manhood. That was the killer's Achilles heel. That's attacking the son's, his son's manhood. Yeah. Was like, oh, I That can't. was too far. The scene that followed that, right? He's got a gun on her. Her gun is empty, I think, right? They and are standing 15 feet apart. She goes, click, click. And then he's like, huh, and she goes, Rah, and charges and him. And he runs at her. He's with got a fully a gun. loaded gun in his hand. And somehow she's able to tackle they him. They slam and go over. The, and you're oh like, my God, the way they ran at why each other was like some her? WWE it's shit. The, it was hilarious. It's the <laughs> stupidest shit. <laughs> stupidest shit. Now, I'm also the revelation that it is the family. Um, have you guys, we're going to spoil, I'm going to spoil another movie here. Um, have you guys seen Sick? Kevin Williamson's movie that came no, out. No, I haven't. This no, but well, should we? I don't know if you should. I, I but I want to do it with a discussion. Uh, is that? Can I spoil it for you guys? Um. Well, I mean, everybody listening probably hasn't hasn't seen it either. Well, then they can fast forward past this. Part. All right, you got sixty seconds and forward now. Go. It's the same ending. Really? It's a family <laughs> who is upset that their child got killed. The difference is one oh, being COVID right. and I one thing. This. Yeah, okay. It's the same ending. It's yeah. it's a family that came in and decided to kill them because they killed a child before. It's the exact same ending. And But I would rather Kevin watch Williamson the Kevin movie. Williamson version of it, though, you know? like eh, the movie's all right. Yeah. Is, the movie's, is movie's his snip-snappy dialogue in there? It's better than this movie. Okay. Um, plus, I miss that. I plus, miss Gideon it. Adlin's in it. She's great. I love mm-hmm. her. Um, but so, yeah, it's the it, was that Kevin Williams's scream scene. I, but I think it was, <laughs> and he's like, oh, "Fuck it, we're getting this out before they do." I don't know. I know what I was now talking. Now I want to you, watch it to support him. I you was know? like, yeah. you know what? Like, we should have actually seen this coming. Like, this is you know, we should like, no, we, we, I, I, you should have gone like, okay, we well. Well, what's the motive of the killer in the new one? Well, he has to be related to the killer in the last one. That's why it's no, Scream no. Two. Yeah, right. Well, my my theory the whole time was that they would do the there was the thing back when when they wanted to uh, have Stu's twin brother come back at some point. Yeah. That was always a loose plot thread in there, and I was like, 
They're going to do Richie's twin brother. Uh, and he's going to come back and want revenge for the killing of, of him. Which would have been, compared to this, would have been better. I would have been more on board for that. They could have done someone related to Amber. Everyone has completely forgot there, there was like a second ghost race in that incident. Yeah. Well, like, this, is, oh, yeah. this is the yeah. other thing. I'm like, I, Richie's the one you wanted to stick That's with? what I'm saying. Like, you, like, like come on. We know nothing about that Amber girl. Go no. dig into that. Which is know? part seven. Here comes Amber's family. Yeah. Who know. knows? You yeah. can just keep this going forever. Uh, yeah. Forever. Um. Uh, yeah. And then... Uh, Oh, the other thing I want to mention was the way that Chad gets done up, holding by two ghost faces. Yep. That was an original Scream 2 script idea. That's what happened to Mickey. Really? Oh, the original Scream 2 script. They're wow. outside in the backyard. He's like chained to a tree, and Ooh. two ghost faces like gut him right there. And That's chase so him. cool. Uh, right? Yeah. So I, I think that. that got come back for that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this reveal is it's this is one of one of the worst. I just can't like, believe just, Gail Weathers wrote a book on this crime and doesn't know, know. The names or identities yeah. of Richie's parents. I'm gonna, it's to, it's, She's a shitty she, journalist. She even then. says in this, it's called investigative journalism. Yeah. She, yeah, she, she can, so, like, she can oh. find out stuff that the FBI doesn't know about. That yeah. was the other thing. I was like, okay. Um, but we, but no, this is a complete surprise. Uh, yeah. All the ghost faces get killed. They um, do. Um, how does, I mean... Uh, Jenna Ortega falls on one of them, takes a knife from Quinn her gets shot in the head. Uh, oh, yeah. Kirby shoots her in the head, right? No, no. Uh, Melissa Barrera shoots oh, her in the right. head. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and then, then we get the... The dangling off. The dangling uh, and the running. Yeah. And then Jim's oh, Jack Champion's back. below and he's stabs yeah. her in the face or in the mouth. Yeah. The when mouth, she drops yeah. down, he stabs her again. But he gets up and runs around after getting stabbed in the throat. That's not what kills him. No. He gets it. He, he gets, it, he gets up after and that. And then he, because remember, she's on the platform the and there's TV. one on each side. Oh, and the TV is remember, it's funny if yeah. you throw the TV on his yeah. head and he mm-hmm. dies uh, and dies the same yeah. way. Like, I don't see how this would have killed him. He got stabbed in the throat and got up and started running again after that. He was he one did, of the many. Yeah, there was stabbing. It's overrated. It's yep. overrated. You everybody yeah. get it. Get I, I will say I do like Melissa Brera's like stabbing. Seems very like emotional and like kind of dramatic. I don't know the way she like raises her arms to do it is very it's unsettling. You know she gets. It's, she seems too into she's, it. She's definitely know? winding yeah. up. She's yeah. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. She wants as much force in that as she can get right. to it. Well, and she just goes an exorbitant amount. But that's too. The, yeah. the, the, going to her it. character, right? Yeah. She loves mm-hmm. it. So this is her unbridled. But don't worry, she's a good person. She just somebody. loves killing. Yeah. So right, all right, about it. right, yeah. <laughs> but they fall over. Dermot Mulroney gets knocked out, and so we take his perspective, and he wakes up, and then that's when Melissa Barrera is in the costume, taunting him. She calls him. And Which they, I think this is the clip that leaked. Oh, is it? Yeah, Probably. I, I think this yeah. was it. Oh. Which I yeah. knew they were going to get her in the costume as Ghostface in this yep. movie. I knew it was going to yeah. happen. I was just like, I she's going to get in there somehow. It. I wasn't mad at yeah. it either. Um, again, there's certain things in this I do like, despite yeah. all the yelling I've done in the past hour. Yeah. There's certain things that are cool, yeah. like her in it, doing her the reveal and all that stuff. The is cool, but I, I hate that it's face. the girl ghost face has the glittery one, because that's like that's like in cartoons and they put like a bow on its hair to be like, that's the <laughs> they cool all, one. It's all, like, why all, does it have to be a girl ghost face? First of all, you know? they all should glitter more. Yeah. All ghost faces from here on out. They used to glitter They used to the glitter. Day. They used yeah. to fucking shine like a fucking <laughs> disco ball. Comparatively now, now they're just dark shrouds and everything. Right. Which, you know, helps them move through the dark But that just makes it easier to identify them don't you isn't the whole point you don't want to be like uh, you know yeah. you all need to have the same yeah. get up to make yeah, this yeah. work you know then they have a thing and she stabs him 20 times yep. and he's fine until and she's like but i won't kill you i'm like well he's gonna fucking die anyway but then jenna ortega is like eh, what's one more and she gives her a nod and she stabs him in the eyes yep mm-hmm. so jenna ortega is also cool with her sister yes and, you know, yeah as long yeah. as it's this guy he, yeah, he yeah. and she took her own little thrill out of stabbing yeah, Jack you're right. It's throughout. like the moral compass of the movie is all over the fucking map. Right. Uh, Remember when we were horrified that people were getting stabbed? Yeah. No, now, again, now my, my, my problem, that was the thing. I'm like, I never want to be a cheer for Ghostface. We shouldn't yeah. cheer for Ghostface in any form. No. Now we are. Well, they made him a do you cheer, he do you is, cheer for Jason. Yeah. Well, that's that's where we're at. That's, that's where those characters coming. are disposable and have no texture to them you know what i'm saying okay. and in the friday 13th movies the like victims? you know nothing about them right like you know the the like their first names and then their camp counselors that's it yeah. whereas like scream is much more like of a smaller scope of story and it's very much about like two or three families you i know think what I'm we're saying? out of it i yeah. think we're past that i think we've right. gotten to the part where but now i'm saying that's why face- you rate i'm saying that's why you root for jason though because right. these people are nothing Right. You know well, and, and that's what we've that's what we're becoming with this mm-hmm. more and more these people are becoming nothing um uh, ghostface is now he, he he look at the marketing for this. Who's on every fucking poster? Yeah. Who was on them before? Mm-hmm. The characters. Yeah. You know, that scream. Ghostface mm-hmm. wasn't in sight. Now mm-hmm. it's that Ghostface. is what sells the movie. That I will is say there. Th- he is the icon now. He has moved past being 
something smaller. He has joined the ranks, and now he is the one you go see him. The marketing has been fantastic for this movie. Like I like the Scream Six experience. Did you guys see that? Yeah, I saw that. That uh, it's like a haunted house, basically. That's like sequences from this movie. Right, you go to the shrine and stuff. Yeah, I I saw this movie in three D. Oh, oh did you? you did? How I, was it? It was ridiculous. I mean, I, there's nothing in 3D about I, yeah, it. Yeah, you know? I forgot it was coming out in 3D. Yeah, when you I said mean, that, I was like, like what? But it, yeah, there was like the first scream in 3D, and it just ended up being the one that was at the time that mm, I could go see it. So yeah. I was like, all right. But yeah, it was like, yeah, it, pointless. Mm-hmm. Uh, my, when my brother, my brother booked them, uh, this was a family affair for us. Me and my whole family every oh, time. Oh, just like the family of ghost faces. I mean, basically, yes. If there was going to be a family of ghost faces, it might be my family. Um, <laughs> but no, we all went. My mom, my dad, my brothers, my sisters, and all that stuff. Because you know, it's, uh, horror movies are a family event for us, which I do love about us. Um, I forgot where I was going with that. Uh, yeah, what were we talking about? You went and saw it with your family. I did. You're saying family as many times as they do in those Fast and Furious um, movies I saw it right 3D. now. Oh, 3D. Oh, my brother booked the tickets in 3D first off, and then I was just like, I'm not going. Yeah. <laughs> I will go see something else. You guys have fun. No, I'm not going the, to see this in 3D. Because it's a conversion. It wasn't meant yeah, to oh, be yeah. in 3D. Yeah. There was one scene which, in which, the- in if the... you ask the filmmakers, they only did it as a tribute to Wes Craven because yeah. my soul to take got post-converted to 3D for no fucking reason. No, when it came out, way, yeah. which I to make is, more money. No, That's I know, but is, yeah. as the joke would yeah. be, because everything's a reference to something else, yeah. they yeah. did this because of uh-huh. this. I, like it's it's just the same bullshit like AMC charging where you sit per yeah. seat. It's yeah. it's just another way. No, to get I would money. I would kill to actually see like a real 3D movie. Again, right, but I haven't. So, well, yeah. Avatar, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, they, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You get all three and a half hours of that there one. Come on. That should be enough to stockpile your 3D battery for the rest of your life. All right, so that's Scream Six. We're gonna tell you what we thought about it. If you should see it. With our final reviews. Because, I mean, maybe, who knows? One of you loved it. Maybe I loved it. Maybe you loved it. We're going to find out. Maybe but first, maybe I'll kill you before we get to that and just reveal ourselves yeah. as ghost face. Don't kill but... Igor, because he's going to bring us the mail. Oh. Igor, bring us the mail. Masters! Masters the mail! I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, right, thank you, Igor. I wonder if Igor, like, if there are scarier things in horror movies, and Colin just provided us with one of them. <laughs> Do you think Igor has, like, a dad and siblings that would come for us if anything happened to him? I think Igor's made of his dad and siblings. There you oh, go. I always assumed he was, like, an organism that, like, reproduces by, like, split splitting himself, you know? So, like, he is his own dad, you know? <laughs> but I think he well, has maybe. that ability now. But I think yeah. the other, like, I think he does that to, like, regenerate, and then the other one dies. Like, he'll ah, split gotcha. off and make a new one, but then the old one shrivels yeah. up and. The old it's, model. It's like, yeah. It's, yeah, it's like mm-hmm. he's. Uh, um, Shedding his skin. Yeah, 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 exactly. Keeping him immortal. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, we should remind the good folks at home how they can participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or they can email us. Saturday, Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. About this movie, tonight's movie, sorry, it was a surprise. <laughs> so we didn't so, yeah. uh, do a mailbag. You can uh, mailbag us next week after you hear this. I'm That's sure right. people will have thoughts. Yeah. yeah. Um, last week we watched a movie called There's Nothing Out There. <laughs> yes, there was something did. out there, though. There, there was. It turns there, out there was, was something mm-hmm. out there. It wasn't uh, a shark or bears. <laughs> it was a boom we, mic. Included. Or a boom mic. Yeah. yeah. Well, Peter Gatt, apparently the only person who's seen this, said, <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed There's Nothing Out There. It's a fun watch. Truly. We had a good time what? with it. We did I had have a good, good time. time with it. Uh, the week before, I believe we watched The X-Files. Pat Hetfield oh, yeah. said, I've already seen this movie in the theater, so my question is, since the freak show approved it, does it mean we have to watch it again? Sure, why not? Wait, when did he see it? In the theater. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, it's been 20 Unless you have, like... Some years. Unless you can good listen re- to it. memory of it. Yeah. Yeah. A good memory of it, and you want to yeah. just I think it just means you fine. have to have seen it. If yeah. I've already so. seen it, you've checked the box. Again, yeah. with, yeah, or if you're, you know, if it's been a while, watch it yeah. before you listen to us. Uh, we Always were talking about a scene in the X-Files movie where there's a demolition, a bombing of a federal building, yeah. a building next to the federal building, mm-hmm. and we concluded, I think, that the movie came out two years after the Oklahoma City building, so really, uh, a bombing. Yeah. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, wasn't Oklahoma City name-checked in the movie, or am I remembering it wrong? It was I in the scene so. with Blythe Danner mm-hmm. when Scully goes in to gotcha. talk to the heads of the FBI. Uh, Travis Legler says, well, Lucas Black, who's a little boy in the <laughs> X-Files, uh, him being in the movie and then a couple of the Fast and Furious movies make sense. He was taken over by an alien thing from space in the X-Files movie and then in Fast, and F- Fast 9 helped make one of the cars go into space. So now he has to be in the X-Furious Files flight for family <laughs> tagline, even in space. 
All you need is family. I love. I'll watch family. it. Fuck yeah! Did they go to Brino. space? Okay, I must have missed Fast Nine. Fast nine. No, Where was I don't I? think they've gone to space yet. What? If you, you told me they did, I believe you. I mean, there's I a Tesla think... Roadster somewhere in space right yeah, now. There is. Yeah, that is true. true. Yeah. That's true. Uh, and B Shaw foolery says after Scully and Mulder kissed, they had as about as much chemistry as stale bread and water. Well, that usually happens on TV shows yeah, when the it. will you or won't, will there or won't they get together? It kind of breaks all the tension for the show. Yep. Yeah. Because yep. then what's the next thing that you can do? Yeah. Will they? Well, they have a kid. And look how this will change. Thing. And everybody's like, oh, that's I, no what one I wants that. See. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, so now we're going to go around the table and tell you... Oh, thank you all for writing mm-hmm. in, seriously. Yes, uh, we appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, Scream 6, starting with Michaela. I would like you guys to give your rankings of the franchise as we go around to and do our wrap-ups. I mean, I it's, probably, only, it's only six movies. That. It's not that many. Though. I was going to say, yeah, that's... Yeah. Yeah, uh, for me, uh, it would be one, two, four, three, six, five. Um, one two four three six five. Yeah. One two four one. Okay. One, one two, two four. four. Because I'm a one, two, defender three, four. Yep. And, and then six, six and, and then five. five. Is my okay. Least favorite. So wow, yeah. that might be true. I think yeah. I don't know. My ranking of three, I, I dislike. Three, three bounces though. around a lot yeah. for me because I'll go with yeah. your ranking though. Yeah. Why not? Okay. Two one three four five six. Okay, you would. Okay. Yeah. I I I, <laughs> wow, six I, I understand that, but oh. Worse than the last yeah, one. Yeah, you. Th- I. I. Well, yeah. we'll get to it. Uh, well, um, yeah. <laughs> okay, I did like this more than than Five Cream. I did. Uh-huh. Um, but I think that's because the action set pieces were cool. I will say it was. Te- they did deliver on the bigger. It was a bigger scale movie. I'll give them sure. that. Sure. Um, I did. You know, I did like the action set pieces. I did love how violent it was. I feel like I don't see movies this violent in theaters very much anymore. Everyone um, kept using the word brutal. Yeah. yeah. Even but people. It, it feels like they're getting they're ramp because I just saw Cocaine Bear. Yeah. And that was the movie I saw before this. Yeah. And it was like that had a level of brutality for comedy. I was like, yeah. Jesus. Uh, uh, so yeah. It feels like gotta keep we're up. ramping up. To, yeah. yeah. And I'm I'm fine with that because we've talked about on this podcast before how mu- movies have gotten really puritanical out of nowhere. You know. So mm. um, I'm okay with it. I. You know, we I, I'm sure it sounds like we hate this movie based on the last <laughs> hour you listened to, but I don't hate this movie. This is definitely no Halloween ends territory. Like I, w- I actually do want to rewatch this movie because, well, I, w- I would just say I want to rewatch a montage of all the kills is what I want, really want to watch because some of them seem to be so chaotic and go by so fast. I wasn't really clear on what was happening. Yeah. Um but I, I told you this movie just goes. It yeah, does not stop. It has a, a, a jarring pace. Yeah. Um, but also I f- was bored at times. Like that when they have their whole core four dinner where they're just like hanging out and having a good time, I'm like, why why are we spending time here? I I why? I, I uh, when, what is this? when Mindy's giving her speech, I yeah. was yeah, so was over it. Yeah. I was, I was so, like, when before it even started, I'm like, I'm done, I'm over yeah. this because uh, But why oof. do I want to see these this group of people just like hanging out and pretending like their lives are fine together? Like this is not what I come here for, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, well, unless we're gonna have I some just, good moments that for the characters and stuff I like find that. Which the whole, I think yeah. we, this is what they thought that was. Yeah, I just find the core four thing super cringy. When they kept saying Again, that, like you, a cheer, I was like Ugh. Like you can't name yourself pod gods, yeah. you can't name yourself the core four. Uh I you know, I wish they would We would've... are the core four, by the way. I just <laughs> want to put that out there. <laughs> I wish they would have kept Samara Weaving and uh, Kirby a secret. I think it would have been better to go into these movies not knowing that and oh, then yeah. getting that reveal. I I would have then been legitimately excited to see Kirby, probably. I'm disappointed because I love Scream 4 and I was excited they were bring her back. But, like, what was the point of this? Like, the, it, it wasn't even good fan service, you know? Didn't it didn't feel like because her. They, it didn't feel like her character at all. Mm. Um, and that hair helmet they gave her was just awful. <laughs> That's like, really your thing. We, like, it doesn't move. It's just like, uh, it looks like she's wearing a helmet what? of hair. Like, <laughs> I know this is going to sound weird, uh-huh. but the scene with Gail when she gets attacked, she yeah. has her hair in a ponytail. Uh-huh. I was like, thank God. Yeah. Because you don't see anybody do that. Right. Like, Melissa Barrera and Jenna Ortega would have put their hair yes. up at some point. Especially with how sweaty they are. It, yes. To keep it out of the way. Exactly. I'm not a woman, but if I had, yes, like, exactly. women are just like, no, I can't have this bothering right. me. It's got to go in a ponytail. Right. So I thank God Courtney right. Cox had a ponytail. I can't believe I'm saying It's that. also harder for someone to grab your hair if it's up in a ponytail, too, because right. it's not all flying around. True, you know? and you grab yeah. some of it. They got to so, go for a specific spot. I went to public school, so I know this, but, <laughs> like, when girls were going to fight each other in school... Uh, they would put their hair up it's, and put vas- like they would put Vaseline out. on their face. Oh, because if you punch someone, your hands that's what they off. do in boxing. Yeah, yeah. So like, I I'm like, <laughs> I would have loved to see someone in this movie take their hoops out, put their hair up, put some Vaseline on their face. You know, <laughs> all right, all right. Let's go yeah, get Ghostface. Go. Like yeah. there should have been yeah. that. Uh, it's I mean, yeah. I they did Gail super dirty. I understand yeah. why Nev Campbell didn't come back. I respect her for 
doing what's best for her and if they don't if she feels like they're not paying her enough money good for her yeah she, she is I, this far, franchise she's you know, lucky so. to not well, have been in this there movie. was nothing for her character to do in right. the last one but she alluded to their being like a level of sexism in what she was offered and pay sure. compared to oh, other yeah. people's what mm. she said. So if that's the case, like, I mean, no, the whole franchise her. exists because of her, you know, yeah. like, um, but now she's a backseat. Character, yeah. You know? uh, right. Yeah. And I do like Melissa Barrera. I, I like Jenna Ortega and other things, but not these movies. I don't know something about her, like puppy dog. I look just, it, it annoys me because I just want to be like, are you a baby or are you an adult? You know, it kind of is the same way I feel about Tom Holland. Like, what are you? Are you a man or a child? Like, pick one. And she's a very know? small person. So yeah. It's, it's, and I just, yeah. but I do like her in like X and I like her in Wednesday. I like her in other things. I just, I don't like her in this role. Apparently um, she's in you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so I actually am going to recommend it just because I did like it better than Scream 5. Okay. And I did like a lot of the kills and a lot of the violence was surprised me. And I want movies like this to make money so that we get more. Like, I want more big budget horror movies, even if they are legacy sequels that are going to annoy me, because then at least horror is still moving along. So mm, I'll see, take what no, I I'd rather get. I would rather horror just shut down altogether than get more. No, of see, I don't want that. Well, the cycle's got to end because, you know, it's in <laughs> waves and stuff. But I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, this was a thirty five million dollar movie, which like compared to a Marvel movie is nothing. But like, could you imagine if we had a hundred million dollar screen movie, you know? To go towards, uh, I was to say, to go towards what? To go more to blood, uh, more stabbings, uh, the multiverse. But like, I mean, just to have the freedom to do whatever you want would be well, great. I think they had a lot of freedom so, in this, but yeah, um, yeah. yeah, I love the marketing. I loved the ghost face experience. Like, I love all the marketing I'm seeing for this. It is fucking everywhere. The mo the funnest part. The cross promotion is really fun. I like that I got the popcorn bucket and the even cup. my dad got the little ghost face figure. On top I got of the one. Thing. Yeah. They have three different poses. Did yep. you know that? Yeah. So like this reminds me of like being a kid but in the nineties. This, 90s, is, you this know? is it now. This yeah. is the bigness of it. Yeah. The cool little things to have on top of your cup. And yes. Everything. This is what ghost face is now. This yep. is what screams are now. And that's I like that though. Okay. Like because as a kid growing up being the freak for liking horror movies, now it's like the thing I like is widely aren't accepted. You, aren't you now. mad at them? They're just like this was I had this first. I mean that's how I did although that's how it doesn't feel like. That's how gatekeeping is, and I don't like yeah, that. Exactly. Oh, yeah. The exactly. thing you like right, right, has right, been right. co-opted and now, you know, spun out into... I mean, that's kind it's of... For it's, not, it's, yeah, for it's, yeah. it's not... Yeah, it's not really... Yeah, but I, I, I don't know. I'm okay with it being normalized, you know? So, uh, because we'll still have our weird little oh, horror yeah. movies. That, yeah. Those aren't being taken away from nope, us. Nope, still got you know? what we, I like. We still got our significant others out there, you know? So, yeah, I can have both, you know? Yep. So, I'm going to recommend it because... It's a scream movie. It has cool kills. But, I mean, have your expectations in the right place. So, Colin, what do you think? Uh, I went into the movie under duress. Is that true? No, because ultimately I did go to see it. I was sitting there, you know, <laughs> like after the last one, I'm like, you know what? I just don't give a fuck about these movies. Yeah, anymore. we had to talk you into going to see it. Yeah, I think the yeah, reason I went to see it, it, I was going to skip it. Oh, wow. And the reason I went to see it was specifically because I knew, right? That all the universe three, told everybody, you. All you guys were going to see it. And, and I'm like, we'd have to have the conversation. And we're going to talk about it. And so I'm like, oh, fuck, I have to go see this goddamn it's movie. It's really so, a good thing you did see it now. Well, Truly. that was, yeah, I know, the way it worked out. But uh, so that was my, you know, going into it. So I'm like, okay, I'm really, I have, my expectations are in the toilet. Let's go see this fucking new screen movie. And I guess like, you know, for the first, I think half, I was like, I, I mean, it wasn't, um, it wasn't like a great, you know, like something you're like, oh man, this is really good, yeah. but it was serviceable. Sure. You know, I, uh, was okay. I was trying to figure out what, well, you know, what was going on and how everybody was related and who's going to do it and, you know, all this other stuff, but it was somewhere in the middle portion of it where I started to lose interest and may have. Uh, I, I was also sick. I'm getting over it now. But yeah. when I saw it was the night I was coming down with the symptoms that sucks. and the movie, you know, wasn't holding my attention because it's like, okay, you can feel that you're clocking into the, the gears are, are turning in the standard slasher movie, uh, you know, yeah. a formula and the scream formula. It's like, I don't really care. And I'm not even sure who's dead. And then my, my experience was that the ending just went, like completely uh bat shit crazy like not in a good way no it felt like the wheels are falling off this thing they were making stuff up that like I, this makes no sense this is a stupid idea this is creatively dumb uh and so no i i would not recommend this movie and i i realize you know again i keep saying this like i'll advocate for like Friday the 13th part 8 or so sure let's do it i'm so fucking ready i am so ready for another friday the 13th no no, no, yeah, I don't no want to see another one. <laughs> if if this is like, you know, Scream and Halloween, like I see how they have gone. And, and they're Texas basically, Chainsaw Massacre, don't forget. 
Yeah, but that seems like on a smaller scale, it's a Netflix thing now. Hellraiser is a Netflix thing now. But the two big titans of box office are Halloween and Scream as yeah. far as uh, slasher movies go. And it's just like, I really don't even want to see uh, a, the, a, what a new Friday the 13th movie is because I know what it would be. You know, I guess that's what I'm troubled by is like, it's not going to be the movie I want. Yeah, It'll have Jason in it, but it's not going to be what I want out of it because I'm a fan of those older films. I thought those were, you know, the core things. Uh, that's the same thing that's going on here. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's old man syndrome. I don't know. I don't think so. I think I'm I, looking I think at so it either. as, you know, like, okay, as a film, does it function? Does the logic check out? Is this like a good story? Are these characters uh, involving or interesting? And it's like the answer. I mean, all you have to do is look back in the Scream franchise yeah. to see where they did this right. Yeah. You know? Scream 2. Just go watch yeah. Scream 2 instead. And then you look at saying. this and you're like, these are poorly written characters. I don't know who. I mean, even now you're like, you know, Jenna Ortega. It's like, I thought she was fine. Fine. I don't yeah, know fine. anything about her character like that lingered with me. I remember Sam because there's a focus on her. And nobody else matters at all. And like Kirby, it like shows up and it's like, oh, it's Kirby. I remember she was in the fourth one and I kind of liked her and that because you like Hayden Panettiere. Panettiere. She was good. She was charming in that movie. In yeah. this movie, I think Hayden Panettiere has maybe been out of the game a little bit. She seems. Well, she has. She and it's her. Tough. And it's the, the character that they give her is yeah. not Kirby. No. No. You know, it's like, here's an FBI agent who's called Kirby yeah. and has the memories of, you know, but it's like, it's a different, <laughs> yeah. has the know, memories of Kirby, it's has the memories of, of Kirby. Yeah, but yeah. it's not Kirby, you know? So, um, yeah, everything that you liked about her is they, they took out of her. Uh, I would not recommend scream f- six, six or five <laughs> or seven. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's coming. <laughs> Timestamp okay. that right now. Okay. We'll see how Colin feels about. Scream yeah. Seven maybe. Well, right I don't know. I mean, there, there was promise at the beginning of this one. I'm like, Oh, yeah. we're yeah. going to do. Oh, and then now, no. Okay. So, yeah, we know as long as radio silence is involved. And, you know, I mean, hey, I don't good luck, directing. guys. Well, the last I time that, like uh, well, but this one I did kind of like some of the, the sequences. Um, mm-hmm. You know, sometimes you're just saddled with, like, whatever the scripting and the plot is. And that right. was the last one. It was like, you guys really wanted to make Scream, but you weren't alive back then. Or you weren't old enough. And now you're, you're yeah. getting to make Scream. This one, they're like, okay, we're doing, this is our Scream. Yeah. You know, we're getting to do our own version of this. But it's like, okay, but it's, it's, but it's, but at this point, it's like, all you have to work with is it's another scream. Yeah. Movie. I mean, are you really doing your own version? If you're just doing all the stuff that they did already, I you're mean, living in the shadow. Of they they West go Kerman. by, they go by, they think that what makes it different is the, is the set pieces. Yeah. Like, like that is what it's like, but that's not what is, I don't know, identifiable to scream, even though we bring them up so much when talking about things like scream two and all that stuff. Yeah. I don't know. Are you done? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, man, I had I had hope going into this movie. I mean, Get it's that. what, uh, but it's Scream. I can't like it's you know. This is his sickness. You know, that's my sickness. Um, but it, the sickness gets better every day. The more sequels they make. Um, yeah, I can't. I w- man, I was really blown away by that opening, and I thought, wow, we're gonna do something because that was so interesting. Where they could have gone from that opening. And then we, from there, we just devolve into, as good as they may be, action set pieces like we discussed. Again, as good as they may be. Um, I get that everyone, brutal is the word that everyone, 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 everyone has used and every review has used to describe this movie. Um, I think, I think, I don't, I understand how it is. That never had an effect on me, but I uh, I recognize that that is just me and all the shit that I've seen. Because yeah, you're saying that, and I'm like, it's a the, horror movie. It's, and, right, and I'm okay, just like, whatever. yeah, I was not like, yeah, like oh my it god. Didn't, it, right, it did not exceed anything for no. me to that was just like, whoa, I'm just like, okay, yeah. Well, they you aren't trying to shock the normies. Right, and, I th- and that's talking to other people. They have had that reaction, and they've used the word brutal, and it's like, the kills were great, and I'm just like, okay. So that those parts are getting through to audiences. That's why they like these movies. Maybe they don't give a shit about uh, if the reveal at the end makes a lot of sense or not. They get a good movie with some kills, and it was tense for a few moments, and if the ending doesn't quite stick it, eh, they're fine with it, because they're not maybe that invested. What's up? Well... The first Scream movie, because I was like, well, you know, it's like so Scream's devolved into a brutal slasher movie. But yeah. I'm like, well, the first one was brutal. But the thing about Wes Craven, his were mean. 
Yeah. Like yeah. He, that was there was a meanness to yeah. some of the, mm-hmm. the kills in his movies and the way they were done, which you know that that's why Wes Craven brutality is like, yeah. oh, it feels like you're like, this is uh you know Yeah. <laughs> like we've crossed a little bit of a line. Here. Right. Meanness in this movie would have had them gut Chad as Sam was pulling Tara away. Mm. Yep. And as he's yeah. crying and staring and yeah, saying, yeah, yeah, go, yeah, his yeah. guts are falling to the <laughs> yes. ground. That's mean, yeah, and that's, that's mean. what I wanted at that yeah. point. Yeah. That's because... So like, maybe it's cruelty. Cruelty uh, is Wes Craven uh, mean or brutal as this. I, I think mm-hmm. may, maybe so. But yeah, his were meaner. Man, I think they could have really... Um, I think as we go along with these movies, we're on a faster track. So we can't wait another movie for you to kill a main character like there had to be someone d- who died in this movie mm-hmm. of of the core four or yeah. gale or something that in order to have again uh, i can't believe i'm going back to having stakes after we just had a movie where dewey died and i thought they understood that mm-hmm. but i think they're too precious about their characters about their core four that to kill anyone off is like well at least not till the third one maybe i think they're overestimating how much we care about mindy and chad yeah i, I, I think probably so yeah like, I, like I, I don't give don't. a shit about either of them, don't. but that girl's on yellow jackets, so I feel like they're like, oh, she's a hot yeah, actress sure. right now, so let's Chaz put her the, on. Chaz, who's Chaz, that guy? Chad's the perfect guy to kill. Exactly. Yeah. He, he gives everyone something a little more, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and he's, you could, in that you know, moment, he would have been a great yeah. death. You know what mm-hmm. would be great? The next movie, right? They all have, like, some of them have uh, colostomy bags, and some of them have dialysis. <laughs> they should. And, like, all oh, this, my God. Like, yeah. like they yeah. all like, go there together? All really, yeah. But no, I'm they're sure, in like, physical rehab together. Yeah. It's, it's just strange that, like, movies, when you get stabbed or shot or whatever, it's all about the puncture wound. Yeah. yeah. They never think about, like, what ha- what's going on in the in- interior. Yeah. Of the body, yeah. you know, it's just like, well, you sew it up, yeah, and, and you're, you're good, yeah, yeah, that's it. We don't There's have... no interior bleeding, yeah, <laughs> right. Apparently, that's was fine because yeah. that's how Mindy got saved because yeah. she is she got stabbed right in the stomach and all that stuff, and then she's back bouncing all around, yep. and all good to go at the end yep. of the movie. Okay, she's I missing love... several feet of her colon, probably. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I thought that stabbing, I got a legit lol out of one moment that I Fuck think, the franchise. Fuck no, <laughs> that, that I think blew past a lot of people. Um, when Jenna Ortega gets stabbed in the front. It goes like in her belly button, and she says, "Fucking virgins." Oh, really funny! That yeah, was really Jesus funny. Christ. <laughs> oh. I, lo- I laughed at that, and I don't think many people oh, caught. No, that. I, don't, I didn't catch yeah. that. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. Now that you say it, I remember. Yeah, that. it was pretty funny, <laughs> and kind of like racy for this type of movie. Cause then there's like a whole make... thing that Ethan's like, he's going to die a virgin. Die virgin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then she stabs him and goes, now die a fucking virgin. Yep. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, fuck this movie. Um, <laughs> fuck this franchise. I mean, it really is. They literally fuck said it. Fuck this franchise. And they're just, just. It's not. A, I don't think it's a well-written movie. Mm-hmm. Personally, um, I don't think so. It's clunky at most. Anything they said about Sydney, uh, Gail's delivery of she deserves her happy ending in this movie. I wanted. I wanted to punch her in the face. I'm like, that is the worst delivered line. Yeah. That you. you there's so many. Like she had her happy ending in Scream Three. Yeah. she had it i'm sorry the last shot of that movie's perfect. yeah it's a great it should, yeah. it should have been done um i mean we could say that about a lot of things uh but i don't yeah i don't no i don't have any <sighs> yeah i think the writing's bad especially when we get to the third act reveal i think we're we're <sighs> relying on <sighs> i don't i don't know i'm tired of thinking about this movie um <laughs> it's yeah, I just land think the, the plane. <laughs> what would you land, recommend? Land the plane. No, no, I don't. I'm mean, no way. No, <laughs> no way do I recommend this. Um, I even it, it, you know, it makes the previous entries look uh, better by comparison. No, I think the I don't think the as good as Radio Silence is at probably a lot of things. I don't think, or I'll blame the writers, um, Busick and Vanderbilt, um, who wrote this. Um, they don't they don't write it well. Like they don't. Um, and I think that, oh, that's what I was going to say. I think that's why this movie is on such a fast track with the characters. I don't think they want to give you time to stop and think about what's going on. Oh, yeah. The details connecting. I think that's why that we jump into it real quick and then they just keep going. You get to stop after the kills to have a moment to collect yourselves to get us to the next scene. And then we're back into killings and all that stuff. That's why it's that's a freight train. Every movie now. I know. Every major movie. Just go fast so you don't have time to think. Right. Don't think. Just but, uh, entertained yeah but i think under scrutiny like the, yeah. a lot of this movie just falls apart to me like i don't the, the killer's motivations i don't like are we just out of the realm of believability for screams now like we're just 
Like, is this where we're at? Like, that a whole family turns into a bunch of serial killers, plans this whole elaborate... Th- it's too much. Like, these used to be, I mean, I, simple, or at least simpler, where you didn't have to do fucking mental gymnastics to figure out uh, where everyone was, why they're doing something. Uh, there's no... Be- uh, Dermot Mulroney is f- severely miscast. His performance at the end of this is... Uh, shocking in a bad way. Like I can't. I, I think can't. he's tainted for me forever now. Well, like, I don't. Not that I, I held him in some great regard or anything, but like, right. But he's gonna to, be hard to but forget. Like he, but he, I, I used to take him like pretty mm-hmm. seriously. Like he was a good. Like he's, he's a zodiac. zodiac. Yeah. In, in, a, in a very, it's a very common. Yeah. Very, no, it's maybe. miscasting. Yeah. One, but it's it's miscasting. Yeah. Like they didn't have somebody. They had maybe he could pull off the cop. Uh, sure, fine, but he can't pull off that ending part as mm-hmm. the the architect of all of this and his entire family and all that stuff. This this is a ridiculous movie, ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Um, and I realize that there is a certain level of that, but it's fucking. Re- I no no don't watch this movie. I I don't know who I'm going to convince with that, considering it's like mm-hmm. the biggest horror movie of the this year so far, mm-hmm. and it's Scream, and people mm-hmm. are going to see it, and people are apparently liking it. I don't know, if, but I think that's the thing. Uh, are movies like this going to stick with anybody? I don't the, think so. It's just I, something to do this week. Just with, something to do. The thing with Scream is it has a huge audience that is not horror people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it is It is something that really it does appeal to the masses. It does. It, and I, it, and there's I, a lot of people that aren't into horror but will watch Scream movies, you that, know? I mean, that is very true, and I don't think, and they don't, and they don't have to. I guess that's the mm-hmm. point. It's just like, you know, you don't have to be like me. And right. Like, like I'm, I, I, I want to understand more. <laughs> you live the, a happier life, probably. Right. I want to yeah. understand more, like, I'm going to quote unquote the regular people who, yeah. can, who can just go and enjoy this right. and then move on with their lives. Right. Unfortunately, I cannot. And that is why I'm in front of this mic now saying, right. don't watch this movie because uh, it was a frustrating, very frustrating experience for me. Um, I don't like, it's also, somebody mentioned this on a podcast. It's also the first time. Did you that, listen to the Halloweenies? I did. Okay. We can talk about it okay. off mic. Yeah. yeah. But they, they had he, some bad takes. They had some very bad takes. Um, but they also, they did say something where they they're just like, too. this is the first, or one of the first screen movies where I don't feel like I have to go back and watch it again to, to, and, um, figure out the whole thing that's a to, problem to know the whole thing i it probably is a problem yeah. but i think they're right they're just like i feel like nope i got it i don't need to go back to yeah. try and figure something mm-hmm. out yeah. I, like i'm good like i understood it, it, it as much as you could be understood yeah. mm-hmm. unless you want to go back and look at the specifics and little details of stuff which i'm sure after this wears off i'll i'll watch it again because you know uh, that's who you are <laughs> uh, well, that's who i am but you know i gotta give it one more watch again like i said the shock always gets you the first time I don't think there's going to be any different reaction to me watching it a second time. I can almost guarantee it. Um, I'd like to save you all from that. Don't don't watch the movie. I mean, but if you can watch it and enjoy it, I mean, go ahead and do that too, I guess. Because if you have that ability, more power to you. I don't. So I'm going to say no to Scream 6. All right. Well, there <laughs> you go. So it's uh, one, four, two against. and uh, Hollywood say no. Hollywood would say no. probably Holly say would no. Be like, yeah, she's yeah. over it. She's yeah. way Holly's over done. it. Yeah. Like, she hasn't we- even watched it, and she's probably happy about yeah. that. Yeah. I, I, and in fact, I, think I know. It's like she's like the saner one of all. Yeah, yeah. She's like, no. She I, is. I, I, she doesn't I first let two. herself get sucked in the way yeah. she, she does. Yeah. So yeah. She's smart in that regard. And I think because... We all already watched for it. Well, I think because we, we already watched it and discussed it here. I don't think she's going to see it. No, yeah. no, no. Because she's got no. no reason now. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's a great point. So I don't think she's going to, or, or she'll delay it for a while. But yeah. I don't, when it's, it's on it streaming, is, it is very it. low on her list. Yeah. We'll say that. Yeah. All right. Well, next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Michaela. What are we going to watch next week? Sorry for you, Stella Dweller folks. We will, you know, watch Stay that tuned. You'll, we'll the get future. there. So now we are on to Michaela. What do you got? We are going to watch a movie called Down. From Ooh. 2001 with Naomi Watts, uh, also called The Shaft. It has two different titles. Mm. Okay. I would encourage you to not look anything up about it if you can. Colin, I can send you stuff for... Well, uh, I can tell you right now, I will not be Googling The Shaft. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, like, for many reasons. And what's funny is that it was called Down and they changed it to The Shaft. That's, we, uh, that's, why not that's just call not it Down The, right... the Shaft? <laughs> yes, exactly. Also not Googling that. Yep, yep. So, <laughs> the, Down or The Shaft from 2001. Okay, all right. Well, that's next week. We hope you do your homework uh join us for that episode and until then ladies and germs the basement is going dark shaft